The Empire of Adrasia. The capital is wild. Adventurers Guild. After completing the quest, a man came here. Everyone immediately turned around and began to watch him closely. Someone said that it was. This man was dragging some kind of artifact behind him. Someone said it was the fat of the Minotaur King. He's real. His friend asked him if he was serious. He's a very rare AA rank monster. Did he kill him alone? Meanwhile, the man approached the reception desk, and he handed the girl this horn. The girl called him by the name of Silver and thanked him for the difficult work, and she also handed him his reward. Silver said that, as always, thank her very much. The girl said that it was a big thank you to him, one of the five SS rank adventurers on the mainland. Being here at its imperial branch is something to be proud of. She turned to this man again and asked why he needed this money. Silver said he wanted to buy everyone a drink, and if there are high-level quests, then let them let him know about it one. The girl smiled and said yes, of course. She understood everything. Silver is an adventurer who takes so many high-level missions. That's why the guild notifies him first when it comes to a mission of the highest difficulty. But there are adventurers who don't like it. It is very important to relieve their tension. Because of his personality, he cannot act openly. He came to his house and took off all his camouflage. Anyway, Silver said that if the fact that the prince is an adventurer is revealed, then there will be big problems, right? He is the seventh prince whose name is Arnold Lakes Adler. If they know about it, they should be careful. Then the butler, whose name is Sebastian, came up to him. Arnold started in surprise and asked the butler that how many times had he told him not to come in without knocking. Sebastian said it was his habit. Arnold said that he also did not want to listen to his lectures, which say what this stupid prince does all the time. Arnold has a twin brother. He has incredible prowess, a good mind and a good personality. He is a genius who can flawlessly complete any task he is given, and no matter what he does, he will be praised for it. Despite the fact that they have the same faces, he has grace and grace. He also has countless girls chasing after him. Even though he's his brother, he's still infuriating. On the other hand, he has no ambitions, and he is not worried. He is a stupid and useless prince who has no skills at all in this matter. He used to play a lot when he was a kid, and all the tutors refused such a child. In a short time, this news spread throughout the capital and then throughout the empire. Everything good that was in the name given to him was destroyed by his brother. Even now, in the castle, they look at him with contempt, despite the fact that he is of royal blood. That's the kind of prince he is. The butler told him not to worry. With his popularity, no one would know about his strength. Arnold said he wasn't worried about it. He was just trying to accept the facts of such an appeal to him. And he will repeat that there is no reason to waste time on lectures about the duties of a prince. Sebastian said he understands his intuition. But it's very important. Should he go back to the castle? General Dominic is dead. Arnold asked, what is this old general? Dominic was a famous general of the Imperial Guard. After more than 50 years of fighting on the front line, he was retired and held the position of advisor. In his old age, he developed various diseases, but this is definitely not the true cause of his death. The only thing that comes to his mind is murder. Arnold said that one of the three. Sebastian said that the details are unknown, but at this time they are looking for the culprit. Arnold thought Dominic was the kind of guy who made enemies easily, but there had to be only one reason to kill him. He joined the battle for the throne. He was a man who criticized all the princes and princesses, but there was one prince whom he supported. Then could it be a threat, or someone like that? Basically the culprit may be the one who aimed at the throne. But still, he is only a general his death will not bring damage to the empire. Probably, the culprits covered themselves with the fact that he died of diseases. The only one who will suffer damage is the prince who has lost his ally. And the name of this prince, Leonard Lakes Adler, his twin brother. Arnold said his brother had naturally found an ally. He didn't do it with the intention of strengthening his power in order to seize the throne later, but Sebastian said that the fact that such a simple action was regarded as strengthening power is a big problem. Only because of this, Prince Leonardo was marked as an enemy for those who aspire to the throne. Arnold thought that three years have passed since the death of the crown prince, the emperor's children are fighting for the throne. The only candidate for the throne is two prince, two princess, and three prince. Each of them has high chances. Leo, who attracted the attention of General Dominic with his benevolence, became the fourth contender. For other heirs, besides the first three, there are only two ways. One is to become an ally or remain neutral. Two is to become an enemy and strive for the throne. 
after the receiver is selected and if they lose, based on the decision of the one troika and they face either exile or a death sentence. This also applies to relatives in Leonardo's case, it will be him and their mother. Leo should definitely be on the list of successors, because now there is no point in becoming someone's ally or remaining neutral. He said his brother had no choice, but to become an emperor. The butler asked if he wasn't going to become emperor. Arnold asked what's what. That is, in his opinion, he looks like an emperor. He's a man who's thrown all the boring stuff at his brother, but he's not going to stop there. He wants to live the carefree life of an adventurer, but he doesn't want to die yet. It's hard, but he thinks he has no choice. He has to play behind the scenes for the sake of his beloved brother, the capital of the empire, the city of the holy sword, wild. Arnold showed up there. There he was met by two men, one of whom said that he looked energetic today. Arnold thanked him. This man said that he looks carefree every day. He even envies him. And Prince Leonardo practices every day, unlike him. Arnold said that this guy does everything ten times better than him. The man said he was absolutely right. He had heard that he was going to join the fight for the throne. In this battle, Prince Arnold can only lose, can't he? Another man said he was sorry they were being compared. Although they are twins, but the difference in talent is immediately visible. Another man apologized for being rude. Arnold, passing by them, said that let them worry about it, he didn't care. And he himself thought that they were all laughing at him, bowing their heads as a sign of respect. In the entire royal family, he is the only one who has no power. The entire aristocracy, including the ministers, looks down on him with contempt. It is because of this that he does whatever he wants. He considers it normal not to stop or change his behavior. Nobody cares about him. Therefore, he can continue his activities as a silver. If they do whatever he likes as a prince, then it is only natural that they will find themselves in the same position. By this time he had reached his brother's door and, pulling the handle, said he was coming in. Arnold approached his brother and said that it seemed that Grandpa had died. Did you hear that he was probably killed? Leonard said yes, probably. Arnold asked what he was going to do. Leonard said he didn't want to join the family's showdown. Arnold said he knew he would say that. And he himself thought that, as he thought, he had no intention of taking the throne. But now, if one of the three people who has the power sits on the throne and they can expect a dark future, if Leo and he renounce their obligations in the family, if they try to escape with their mother, they will be executed. And even if that happens, it will be very difficult. That's why their only way out is. Arnold said they were already marked as enemies. If his brother doesn't join the battle for the throne, then they will die, including their mother. Leonard said yes, he knows that. And he apologized to his brother. Arnold told him not to apologize, because it's more important. Should he tell him his plan? Leonard sighed, then said that he had no choice but to join the battle for the throne. Arnold chuckled and thought that's what he expected, helping him. He was sure that the problem concerned only him. He's too kind to be an emperor. Arnold told his brother that he had no choice but to become one. He will do everything to help him. At the moment, his goal is to recruit allies and build strength. If they build up more power, it will be harder for others to act against them. Leonard said he was fine and asked what about him. Arnold thought that in this battle, the one who has the most power in his hands is the winner. The other three have solid power, lots of resources. With Leonard's current strength, he can't compete with others. Arnold said that he would try to gather as many allies as possible, but let him not have much hope for that. Most of them have already joined the three strongest. Leonard said he knew, and he thanked his brother. He also said that he thinks he is more suitable for the role of the emperor than he is. Arnold said it was nonsense. If he was going to become an emperor, then he wouldn't have a chance. He's going to find a beautiful wife and live a happy life. In order for this to happen, he needs to become an emperor at any cost. And he put his hand on his brother's shoulder. Arnold was very surprised and thought that his brother was trembling. He can't help. He thinks, even for the outstanding Leonard, the top three monsters, when viewed in terms of abilities, the well-being of the nation is guaranteed, regardless of who becomes the ruler. However, no matter how strong they are, they are not invincible. That's for sure. If these three fight each other, then Leonardo has a chance. Arnold said they would now start by raising allies and recognizing their father. Leonard said he was right. After all, the father decides who will be his successor. Arnold said that, well then. How are they going to get his majesty's recognition? That's how the twins' struggle for the throne began. Arnold changed back into Silver. Now he was standing at the gate and talking to the guard. Silver asked the man that hadn't he heard of him. He is a Silver adventurer of SS rank. He's here to meet Duke Clanert. This man said that yes, he had heard of him. There was no news of this from the adventurer's guild. He should stop making noise and get out of here. Silver said if he didn't believe it, he should look at it. This is a guild card made with a secret method. 
It is impossible to fake this. But the man interrupted him and said that he did not need to show him this card. He should hurry up and leave. He's actually busy as he sees for himself. Arnold was already getting angry and thought that this guy was very strong, annoying him. So he wanted to shoot magic at him. A few minutes ago, Arnold talked to their butler about their next steps. The butler asked him what, how about revealing the fact that he is silver? Arnold, without even thinking, said no, although there are advantages in revealing his identity. Since then, when his great-grandfather devoted himself to ancient magic and went crazy because of it, ancient magic has become taboo. Arnold thought that only one person knew about his identity, and that was his butler. This is a secret even for his younger brother Leonardo. Arnold said he was using forbidden magic. For Leonardo, who is aiming for the throne, it would be undesirable if the fact that his older brother uses such magic would be revealed. Sebastian said that, however, Silver has a list of achievements and a good name for her. It is said that he is the strongest adventurer in the entire history of the Empire. Can he be a big advantage of Prince Leonardo? Arnold said it was too early. This is their main trump card, if there is no other way. As long as Leonard aspires to the throne, it will be easier for him to remain a stupid prince. However, it will be much easier for him this way. The butler said that if he decided so, then he had nothing to object to him. But what is he going to do? If he didn't reveal his identity, then they wouldn't be able to help Prince Leonard. Arnold thought that Leo was small and weak from the side. We need to come up with a plan to expand it as soon as possible. He asked the butler, what are there or duchies that are not involved in the war for the throne? Sebastian said that among them, only one is not involved in the battle. And this is Duke Clanert. Arnold thought that a rather prestigious surname had appeared. This house belongs to the royal family or its blood relatives in it. This war is an important event for them. If they support the next emperor, then their income will be great. That's why every duke's house strives to be closer to the candidates for the receivers, so that he doesn't do anything at this time. He asked the butler if there was anything that was causing concern. Sebastian said that everything is as he suspected. There were several monsters that appeared on their territory. They asked for the help of the guild, but the problem has not yet been solved. Arnold said it's because the guild around their area isn't strong enough. It looks like they're in trouble. Then why shouldn't he solve the problem himself? After that, he got up and went to get dressed. Sebastian said he thought it was a great offer, and he asked how he planned to connect Silver with Prince Leonard. Arnold said he would just say that Leonard asked for it. Leonard won't mind, and it won't be difficult for him to explain it later. Sebastian said that to manage the movements of an SS rank adventurer who does not leave the capital, thereby drawing attention to Prince Leonard. If this happens, then the connection of Prince Leonard Silver can be revealed. He is aware of this, right? Arnold said they had an advantage. As long as they thought Leonard had a connection with Liver, they wouldn't act. So far, everything is going fine, which means it's too early to reveal the identity. Sebastian said that if he was so sure, then he wouldn't stop him. However, he should not forget that there is a difference between an announcement and an exposure. Did Arnold say he knows? But he's already gone, so he can feel free to grab a bite. Arnold thought that the journey to this duke took several days on horseback. But with his magic and teleportation, he can instantly appear there. You could say that the whole empire is like his backyard. But it consumes a lot of mana. This ability should be used wisely. With the help of this, he got there, but... But he didn't know what would stop him. It was a stupid gatekeeper. Silver told the man that he had come here on purpose because Prince Leonardo had asked him to. It seems that the prince is too kind. Should he say this to the duke? That the dignity of the prince and his were insulted. The man said there was no way he could believe it. He is definitely suspicious and a liar, so he should hurry up and disappear. Silver thought that they might not have enough people because of the monsters, but they let someone like him guard the gate. This family will be sorry. In order to demand extermination from an SS rank adventurer, a fee of three rainbow coins is needed. The value of the rainbow coin is so high that the peasant does not have the slightest chance to see it. It is difficult for the duke to make this request. He came here by his will, but what to drive him away is a fraudster without confirmation. It's mostly this guy's fault, but it's in the gentleman too. He feels bad for meeting the duke, but he needs to make him scared. Then he looked out the window of this building and saw a girl there. Arnold thought that, judging by her appearance, she did not look like a maid. She must be the duke's daughter, but he remembered what Sebastian had told him about her before he left. Then Sebastian told him that the duke's daughter, she is called the Blue Gull. She is of unsurpassed beauty. He must be careful not to be distracted by her, so as not to forget about his goal. Arnold thought she was pretty, of course, but that had nothing to do with the current situation. This guy turned to him again and asked, what is he standing here for? He told him to get lost. 
Arnold thought that everything should be fine here. After that, he used the teleportation skill, found himself back in his room. Sebastian said he was fast. Arnold said he was doing everything right. He has to cook, because they are going to the Duke's house. The butler asked if he hadn't just been there. Arnold said he was, but like Silver. The one that's coming now, it's going to be Prince Arnold. And it turns out that with this, the Duke has no choice but to cry and beg Leonard. This is already equivalent to dragging him to them. The butler told him that he was laughing very maliciously. Five days later, Sebastian and Arnold made their way to the Duke on horseback. Elmer Vaughn met him there. He told Arnold that it had been quite a while since their last meeting. Arnold got off his horse and said that was for sure when was the last time they saw each other. The Duke said it was his 10th birthday. Arnold asked what really took so long. This is probably due to the fact that he rarely leaves the capital. And he himself thought that since Elmer inherited the title of Duke at a young age, he is a lord who has ruled his territory for several decades. His employees liked him for his noble personality. He is also one of the dukes that the current emperor trusts. After that, they entered the building and entered the duke's office. Sitting down opposite the duke, Arnold said that he seemed to have become estranged from the duke's land. So let him forgive him for that. The duke said no, it was his fault. He has not left his territories for a long time and has not appeared in the capital. Arnold said he didn't have much time now, so let him get right to the point. The duke said that of course and asked what business had brought him to him. Arnold said he was really a terrible person, asking him about the purpose of the visit. It's clear that he came to talk about compensation. The duke asked what about compensation. Arnold said his brother Leonard didn't want it, but being in the middle of a fight for the throne, he can't afford to say it. He had come to remind him of that. If he's even a little grateful, Leo, then he should support him. The duke was shocked and asked to wait a minute. He asked, what does he mean by gratitude? Arnold asked if he was really trying to pretend he didn't know anything. He is a duke who has gained the trust of many people, including even the emperor. Leo, who understands his problems, out of the kindness of his heart did everything possible to help him. What would he think if he found out how he repaid him? The duke said he didn't understand him. He is very sorry, but their duchy has not received anything from Prince Leonardo. Arnold asked what. Sebastian told the prince that it looked like the duke really didn't know anything. Did he really know nothing until this moment? Does he know that Leonard sent an SS rank adventurer here? That's why Silver left, especially at a time when he is involved in the struggle for the throne, where there is most unrest. Hearing this name, the duke jumped up and asked what by Silver he meant the same Silver. Arnold said yes, his. Leonard heard that he was worried about monsters in his neighborhood and personally wrote a letter asking to send him Silver to help. And Silver responded by saying that they would go there immediately. Silver has ancient magic. He had also heard that he was using lost teleportation magic. There's no way he wouldn't come here. The Duke asked if it was really true. Arnold asked him if he really wanted to say that he was lying. Did Sebastian tell the prince not to be angry? Judging by his appearance, the Duke is not lying. Maybe something happened. Wouldn't it be better to give the Duke some time to investigate? Arnold asked what, and what would happen if nothing came out. Sebastian said that if Prince Leonardo called him, he was sure that he would prove everything. If this happens, it's better to hear the option from Silver. Arnold said that since Sebastian said so, he gives him a little time to investigate. But if he hides something, he will find out everything from Silver. And if the problem is on his side, then there will be no more adventurers sent to his territory. The Duke said he understood. Leaving the office, he told him to wait a little while while he collected information from the employees of the house. When the Duke left, Arnold smiled contentedly and said that everything was going like clockwork. Sebastian said it was a rather sinister plan. Almost like a game of chess, isn't it? Arnold said they were the ones who drove Silver away. It was mean for him to call the plan a chess game. He only deepened the wound, but he didn't cut it. The Duke probably wasn't swayed by the words of someone like him, who isn't fighting for the throne. The solution is to attract Silver, one of the five SS, rank adventurers on the mainland. If Silver's pride is smeared with mud, then adventurers will never visit these lands again. Sebastian said that if he had been chased away, he would have sneaked in unnoticed. But he saw an opportunity and left, didn't he? And he also emphasized the greatness of Prince Leonardo by behaving arrogantly. He praises him for being such a brilliant strategist. Arnold said Leonardo was very kind. There are a few fish that survive in clean water, and he needs someone who will pollute the water for him. Sebastian said that if he decided that this would be his role, then he would not stop him. But he should keep in mind that it was he who would suffer from what happened. Arnold said it was fine. What do they need now? So this is Leonardo's reputation, after all. He doesn't care how low his own dignity falls. The butler said he cared. 
His mother and Prince Leonard think so too. Arnold said the three of them were enough to take care of him. Then they heard screams from the corridor that someone was shouting that he was a stupid son. He was trying to destroy their family. Sebastian said it looked like the Duke had finished gathering information. Arnold asked that, well, then where will it all turn out now? After that, the Duke came with his son and said that he deeply apologized. Arnold said stop apologizing already and let them finally report what happened. The Duke said it looks like Silver actually visited them five days ago, but that stupid son chased him away and didn't even make sure. This guy told his father that did he think it was normal that an S-ranked adventurer suddenly came here. He'd think you were an imposter too, wouldn't he? The Duke began to shout at his son to shut up already. He can't even guard the gate while he's gone. The guy said that. But didn't he say that any man should be kicked out of here? It's part of his job. The Duke said that he did not remember saying that he needed to expel an SS rank adventurer. Couldn't he even look at Silver's guild card? Why can't he do that? Arnold looked at this guy and thought that those eyes showed him that he was wondering whether he needed to lie or not. Although in such situations, the best way to minimize the damage is to lower your head and be honest. After that, he turned to the Duke and said that he could lecture his son after the conversation. He is very sorry to say this, but now not only his son is to blame, but he himself is also to blame. The Duke said he understood, and asked him how he could make amends. Arnold asked what to catch up for chasing away an SS rank adventurer who was sent by the Prince. Silver, whose dignity has been stained with dirt, will probably never cooperate with them again. How does he compensate for this? The Duke said he was asking for their forgiveness, they would compensate him with their heads. Arnold said he didn't need his head and his worthless son either. His daughter came into the room and said that then she would sacrifice herself. She asks to forgive her brother and father. The Duke was very surprised to see his daughter here. Arnold thought that he remembered that two years ago the Emperor ordered brooches for hair in the form of a bird from a local master. And among them, a beautiful blue seagull caught the Emperor's eye. The Emperor, who was looking at all this, gathered all the most beautiful girls of the country to the capital, declaring that only the most beautiful girl would wear this brooch. Despite the fact that she is only 14 years old, she was considered the most beautiful. She was Finny Vaughn. She is the daughter of a duke. She was the one who was given this brooch, which is called the Blue Gull. And I got a role model among men all over the country. Finn fell on her knees in front of him and told him to help her father and brother. She also saw Silver when he came. If someone has sinned, then she should be responsible for it. The father immediately ran up to his daughter and told Arnold that please let him forgive her. His daughter is still a child. The guy said his sister didn't do anything. It's all his fault, so let him raise them. Arnold thought that suddenly he was a scoundrel. This was not the kind of development he had expected from a psychological encounter with the Duke. Sebastian told Arnold that the Duke's family members do a lot for them. Why doesn't he just restrain his aggression? Arnold asked, what about Silver then? Sebastian said that if they apologized to him, he thought he would understand the situation. Arnold said that even if Silver solves the problem in this territory, the fact is that their dignity, trampled by the Duke, will not be hidden. Sebastian said they could discuss it with Prince Leonard at a meeting. Arnold said it was useless to discuss it with that guy. He'll forget everything, doesn't he understand? Sebastian said that one of the reasons why people are messing with him, if his memory serves him right, they are brothers with Prince Leonardo. The people he gathered around him, now tuned into the prince. Does he understand that if he spoils the relationship between him and the duke behind his brother's back, it will then affect his position? Arnold gritted his teeth and said that it was fine, then he would follow his plan. After that, he turned to the duke and told him to send his men to find Silver. When they find him, he will talk to him. The duke said he was listening. Arnold told Sebastian to help him, so they found a good compromise point. Arnold can only solve the problem in this area, and then the Duke will become Leo's ally. This is their first debut step towards the war for the throne. If you look from the Duke's side, he is a nobody who bothers his brother's kingdom. But that's even a good thing. Besides, the only one who will get the throne is Leo. Then Finney turned to Arnold. Arnold looked at her and asked what? So she's still in the duchy. It's not like her. There the girl told him to let her go with him. After that, a meeting with Sylvester took place. Silver said that he knew that he would send someone after him, but he didn't think that this stupid prince would come in person. Arnold thought that, of course, it was just an illusion created by him using magic. He was able to fool the guard with magic, telling him that he was the strangely dressed guy who had been here for five days. He made it look like Sebastian had found Silver and after that report went to meet with Silver. But Finn insisted that she go with him, so... He had to play two roles at once. And, of course, he could not be exposed because of the voice. Silver's mask is very strong in magic. 
she can not only change his voice and comma his body, but also, of course, leave a feeling of contact with the target. Even if they have met several times, no one can say that he and Silver are the same person. Silver looked at Finney and asked, who is this girl? The girl came forward and, bowing, said that it was an honor for her to meet him. Her name is Finn Vaughn. Her father is engaged in the extermination of monsters, so she is here on his orders. It's not the first time they meet, they saw each other five days ago. She apologizes for such a rude reception on her part. Silver said she didn't have to apologize, because he had already cancelled all his plans for their house. He had heard that she was in a wise house where people are taken care of, but these are just words. Does she know that for a country that suffers from monsters, adventurers are rare? If she really cares about her people, then they should be ready to accept any adventurers, shouldn't they? The fact that her brother chased him away without even understanding the situation suggests that the Duke has a bad preparation. Finney was very ashamed of it, and she said that it was. This mistake is their home. Arnold, watching their dialogue, thought that, and here is the moment for his first step. He never thought that he would have to do something like this. He would show her that he could convince Silver himself, and then, when Finney told his father, his goal would be achieved. And after that, he is sure that the Duke will be on Leo's side. He came forward and turned to Silver, asked that he would continue his task, right? Silver said that as he sees it, he is standing in front of him now, so yes, he will continue. And then he did something to confirm his words. He called Arnold a stupid prince and asked if he had already made the Duke their ally. Arnold said no, he hadn't received his consent yet. Silver said that was to be expected from a stupid prince. He is not like his brother Leo, it seems that he will remain a stupid prince. Arnold thought it was a very strange feeling when he used his own clone to insult himself. And I told Silver not to worry, because he would take it into his own hands. Silver said he wants him to promise full cooperation. If the Duke agrees to this, then he will do his part. He has his own reasons for his brother Leo to become the next emperor. The reason why he left for the capital and came here is for Prince Leo and the Duke to be in an alliance, just because of this. After that, Silver turned to the girl and said that based on the reputation of Prince Leo and the Duke, he decided to help them. But because they chased him away that time, Prince Leo's reputation was slightly lowered. That's because it was Prince Leo who asked him to help them. If he doesn't force the duke to sign the oath, he may be deceived. She understands that, doesn't she? Finney said her father would never do that. Silver said there was no reason to defend him now. Their trust between the houses has already disappeared. Arnold asked that only if the duke didn't promise to support Prince Leo, right? Silver said that was the point. Arnold said that he would like him to compromise and help kill all the monsters, and then the duke would definitely become Leo's ally. Silver asked if he really wanted him to believe the stupid prince. He understands what he's asking, right? Arnold said that, of course, he knows. After that, he bowed his head in front of him and asked for help. Finney was in shock. Arnold thought that if Sebastian saw him in this position, what would he think? For someone like him, who has no pride, it's easy to bow his head to someone especially in front of the illusion that he himself created. But it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect him in any way. Silver told Arnold then and immediately bowed his head. He really doesn't have the pride of the Imperial family. Arnold said he was sure Leo would have done the same. He knows he doesn't trust him, but he's still Leo's brother, and he would like to finish his work. And he himself thought that at last he would be able to finish it. And again he said that's why he asks him to finish off the monsters. He doesn't want to mess with this problem for too long. Silver said it was fine. Then he will destroy all the monsters that roam around. He accepts his request. He turned to the girl and said that he hoped for their house. She must not forget about their contract. Finn bowed and thanked him. She said she was sure they would do their best. After that, Arnold and the girl went to the carriage. Arnold finally exhaled and thought that he would never do something like this again. Finney thanked him. Arnold asked why she was thanking him. The girl said he bowed his head for them. What happened is entirely their fault. He even managed to persuade Silver for the sake of all the people. She is immensely grateful to him. Arnold thought she might have misunderstood a little. Is she the same as a lion? The type of person who finds positivity everywhere. This needs to be fixed. If she thinks he's a good person, then she's wrong. But it will be difficult for him to go further. Then he told her that he had bowed his head only for his own benefit. It looks like she didn't get it. Finney said that if that was the case, then he should let her continue this not until understanding. She misunderstood that his highness was actually a scary person. But this is not the case. Like she said, yes, it's her mistake. He bowed his head for his own good, didn't he? Not for the good of people and certainly not for the good of her family. But he will forgive her for her misunderstanding of her, won't he? 
Arnold was shocked and thought that he remembered for a long time when their mother took them to watch the starfall, which happens once a decade. The shooting stars that filled the night sky were simply beautiful. The delight and happiness that he felt, and the same feelings flooded into him. He blushed and, turning away from the girl, thought that such a misunderstanding as this is sometimes not so bad. After that, Sebastian and Arnold went for a walk in the woods. Or rather, they went to kill monsters. When he got to the right place, Arnold said, What kind of terrible situation is this? Sebastian said that the Duke sent four groups of B-rank and two groups of A-rank adventurers. However, it seems that they were unable to handle the situation. Arnold said it was useless since they were dealing with a uterus, mucus. This monster spawns countless other slugs. This is a very complex monster. The uterus, mucus can absorb anything and turn it into nutrients in order to produce even more slugs. By the time they sent the request to the duke, the number of limestones already numbered like an army. It was too late. He said that in any case he had to hurry up and get rid of them or there would be no end to it. Sebastian said that, however, in order to protect the trust placed in them, they would not forgive an invasion from even an SS rank adventurer. Arnold said he had already accepted the assignment. Sebastian said that depending on their relationship, it might take some time. Arnold said that, to be honest, they don't have time for this at all. He hopes for the understanding of local adventurers, so Sebastian can come back, because he can handle it himself. Sebastian wished him luck. After that, Arnold turned into Sebastiano and went downstairs. There he met the adventurers. The man came up to him and held out his hand before shaking it. He introduced himself and said his name was Abel. He is the leader of this group. He's an a rank adventurer and thinks he looks worthless in his eyes, doesn't he? Silver also introduced himself and shook his hand. Arnold thought that, as expected, he didn't like him. Abel said that he had heard from the Duke that he had come as reinforcements. But he will just say that yes, of course, and refuse the task, then he will no longer be able to be an adventurer. He understands that, doesn't he? Silver said yes, he understands. Abel said that interfering with someone else's search is also considered a violation of the adventurer code. He understands that too, doesn't he? Silver said that of course. Abel said that so, if he understands this, what is he doing here, interfering with him? An adventurer of this level should not suffer from a lack of tasks. Silver said that what he wanted to say was quite reasonable. He understands his frustration, so if he wants to beat him up or make fun of him, then he won't mind. But since he is from the most interesting, he should ask him if he can do something in this situation. Then a girl intervened in their conversation and said that they tried to resist them, but in the end they retreated without causing them any fatal damage. They definitely lack firepower. Arnold looked at her and thought that another a rank adventurer, a young guy, no, a girl, does she support them? Silver said that he understood why they didn't want to involve him in the search, but let them let him report it to the guild headquarters and insist that they give them permission for her to participate in the task. He will take it and come here again. If they could get rid of the monsters by then, then he wouldn't restore them. However, these days the security of Yes in the territory will be under threat, since he is an adventurer. He cannot allow the level of danger to increase even more. Abel couldn't stand it and said it was fine. He agrees that they don't have enough power, so let them do what they want. And he apologized to his comrades. Arnold grinned and thought that if Abel had been alone, he would have been able to continue on his way. But he also took care of the members of his band. What kind of a wonderful leader. Silver told him that because of their weak attacks, they do very little damage. Adventurers of this level, as a rule, are requested only for groups consisting exclusively of people of a rank. And they did a good job. The guild will be grateful to them. Abel said that to think that this day had come, an SS rank adventurer praised him. Silver said he wasn't being sarcastic at all. He raised his hand and said that he was grateful to him with all his heart and he felt that he owed him. If anything happens, he is ready to help him. After that, he began to use his magic. He said he was a messenger of the gods. He acts on behalf of heaven and earth. The hour of justice has come. Sinners should shudder and the innocent should rejoice. His word is the word of God. His blow is a blow given by God himself. In his hands is a flame that can burn the earth. May the flames of heaven turn the sinner into ashes. And he used magic called meaningful execution. After that, the clearing in front of him was completely burned down. Abel asked him if he was serious. Did he take down a whole mountain? The girl thought that he had used ancient magic, which is used by adventurers of SS rank. The North said that everything should be fine now, and asked if he could leave a report for the guild on him. Abel said he had to do it himself, because they hadn't done anything. He is the hero who saved the duchy. Silver said he wasn't interested in it. He has other goals that he strives to fulfill. He entrusts the rest to them. After that, he disappeared. 
he showed up at his house and, taking off his mask, thought that this was the Duke's mansion in the shit world, specially reserved for the use of Prince Arnold. Later, he will send a report that Silver has subdued the Slug Queen while he was with the Duke. Then he would get his promise from the Duke that he would support him, and that would be the end of his work. But he heard a strange sound in his room. Turning around, he saw Finney. She asked him if he had just teleported. Arnold got scared and thought he had become careless. Finney asked that the suit belonged to Silver, didn't she? Arnold wondered if he should pretend it was all just a misunderstanding and tell her it was just his hobby to dress like that. No, that won't do. Did he have to kill her now? No, that won't work either. Finney is the Emperor's favorite. If something happens here, the Emperor himself will investigate it. Without a doubt, he will become the main suspect. And if that happens, then Leo's struggle for the throne will be over. He can't use the same magic he used on the innkeeper, as it won't help get rid of her memories. He can neither deceive her nor shut her mouth. He doesn't see a way out. Finney said she baked some goodies and decided to bring some to him. But when she knocked, there was no answer, so she thought something might have happened. Arnold thought that sweets. He told her that now she knows his secret. He can't let her leave just like that. Finney got scared and said she wouldn't tell anyone. She won't say that Silver's true identity is Prince Arnold. Arnold said that, but she's already shouting it to the whole world. The girl was scared, but Arnold told her not to worry, because he had installed a soundproof barrier. It doesn't matter what she says now, because not a single word will slip through this barrier. Finney was glad to hear that and wanted to thank him. But Arnold interrupted her by pinning her against the wall. He asked her why she didn't think that he could do something to her. He could even abuse her. No matter what she does, she leads, she won't even be able to call for help. She understands that, doesn't she? Finney smiled and asked what he could do. But that's not possible. And if he really could, he wouldn't have any other choice, would he? Then she would have agreed. Arnold said he didn't remember that both of them trusted him so much. Finney said that if he really is Silver, then it means that all the monsters have already been defeated. Hence, he is the hero who saved their duchy. He also came here as a prince and performed various scenes. It's all for his brother, isn't it? That's why she trusts him. He is the one who acts for the benefit of other people. Such a person cannot be bad. Arnold thought she was really a very kind person. She is capable of believing another person so much. So now she knows he's silver. She also understands that each of his actions was aimed at ensuring that the Duke and for feelings of gratitude began to help them. And she still trusted him even after she found out all this. Can't you let her down? He said the only one who knows his secret is Sebastian. And he knows for sure that Sebastian won't tell anyone. If the truth came out, he would never forgive her. So she shouldn't tell anyone about it. Finn was not happy and said that yes, she understood. Arnold thought that even if he used magic and made her believe that it was all a dream, after a while she would realize that it wasn't. If you rely on her character, it is very unlikely that she will tell his secret. He will take tough measures to ensure that even more people do not find out his secret. Arnold sat down at the table and said that just think that the secret that he had been burying all this time would be revealed in this way. Finney came up to him and told him to cheer up and eat some sweets, and she would pour him tea. Arnold thought that it was all his fault, of course. Meanwhile, Abel had moved on to the Duke. He said that this was the end of their report on this task. The Duke said that indeed, the job was well done. He apologizes for the fact that this has become such a difficult task. This is a small gift from him, let him accept it. Abel refused and said that the reward for the task would be enough. As he mentioned in the report, it was Silver who solved the problem, not them. As adventurers, they have a sense of self-worth. The Duke said they were understandable, very well. If something happens again, he will turn to him for help again. Abel bowed and said that yes, when the time comes, they will do everything possible to meet his expectations and hopes alone. After that, the Duke went to Arnold. He said he wasn't grateful enough towards him, and thanked him. Arnold told him to leave his thanks for Leo. After all, Silver, and he's only here for him. The Duke said that their house would send all its support and assistance to Prince Leo. Arnold shook his hand and told him they were under his supervision. The Duke said they would help Prince Leonard to sit on the throne. Arnold thought that along with this, people who are looking for an opportunity will come to support Leo. Now the Emperor recognizes Leo as a worthy candidate for the throne. We can say that they are already on the starting line. The Duke said they had enough allies anyway, didn't he? Arnold said no, I shouldn't start negotiations with other nobles, which is now just observed by the parties, but for that they need people who trust them. The Duke said it was clear his words were in hope or his. Arnold asked if he was going to provide them with someone. The Duke said he was thinking about entrusting his daughter to them. Arnold was in shock. The Duke, wiping away his tears, said that she wanted to help the prince at any cost. He was also shocked when his daughter told him about it yesterday. 
This is not like her at all, because requests of this kind are unusual for her. He was touched to the core. Arnold said no, let him wait. He will have problems if he entrusts it to her. The Duke said that his daughter was famous in the capital. She would be useful to him. Arnold said he admits it's true, but is he sure about it? He thought that, to be honest, they would gain countless benefits if they took her. However, it's unexpected that she wanted to go to the capital. He thinks that the reason lies in the fact that she found out his true identity yesterday. There are many opportunities for interaction with other people in the capital. He never knows where to get information. The Duke said that this is what Finney dreamed of, so let him use it wisely. After that, she packed up and everyone set off. Finney was already sitting in the carriage with Arnold and, after saying goodbye to her father and brother, said that she was leaving. The Duke told her to make sure she was helpful. Her brother shouted at her to take care of her body. After that, Finney turned to Arnold and said that she might not be very useful, but now she's in his care, so let him take care of her. And she asked if he was really angry. Arnold said he was just amazed. From now on, the struggle for the throne will begin. Then countless dark and bloody battles await them. If she changed her mind, now is her only chance to go back. She understands that, doesn't she? Finney said she understood that, and she still wanted to be useful to him. Also, if she is next to him, it will be easier for him to keep track of her. Arnold said no, he would have been less worried if she had stayed on her territory. And he himself thought that everything would be fine with him if he allowed such a girl to find out his secret. After that, Arnold came to his brother. Leonardo said that he knew that his brother was widely known, but he could not have imagined that he knew Silver. Arnold said that he was the one who contacted him. He said that as proof of his trust he would help recruit the Duke. So he made up a story in which he asked Silver for help. It's his mistake that he didn't ask his permission after it already happened. Leonardo said that everything was fine. His brother had his own opinion on this, didn't he? Arnold said that yes, he thinks he can be trusted so far, but he is a mysterious person. He has not revealed his motives for cooperating with them, so you should not completely trust him. And he himself thought that Silver had taken the initiative. In this case, it will be easier for him to act. And even if the connection with Silver is revealed, it will look like he used it. Leonardo said that, but thanks to him the duchy was saved. And they got the Duke's support. There is no doubt that he is a good person. Arnold said he was at it again. Again, he thinks only about the positive traits of everyone. Arnold looked at the girl and said that Finney had also come here after all. Finney brought him a cup of tea and told him to have some tea. Arnold took her tea and thanked her. He said it was very tasty. Finney said she was very happy. Arnold thought they were being friendly, even though they had just met. It should be considered as a talent. Leonardo asked that how did he want Finney to help them. Arnold said that mainly as a negotiator. To begin with, she will often travel from her mansion, to them, to the capital. This should show that the Duke is on their side. That's all for now. And I asked my brother if he was able to gather allies in the capital. Leonardo said it was hard to say. Influential people have already joined one of the three parties in the capital. Now he is trying to persuade stubborn nobles who have remained neutral. Arnold said that, as expected, even if they knew that the Duke sided with Leo, the only one who can do something is stubborn nobles. Then Finney intervened and asked if they could tell her about the other three factions. Leonardo asked her brother if he hadn't told her about it yet. Arnold said that she asked unnecessary questions all the time and he didn't have the strength to explain it all to her. Leonardo turned to the girl and told her not to worry, because it's normal for his brother to exchange like this. He's the kind of person who rejects all kinds of conversations. Finney looked happy and asked, is it really true? Arnold said it was because rejecting such questions was even more problematic. He took something out of his pocket and threw it on the table, told her to think of them as three factions. Each of them is building up power, striving for the throne. Two prince is Eric Lakes Adler, who is 28 years old a smart prince who controls most of the cabinet members. Three prince is Gordon, who is 26 years old. He is the most powerful, the property of their army, often personally take part in the battle. Two princess, Xandra Lakes Adler, who is 22 years old. She is great at magic and has also gathered the support of all the magicians of the empire. Arnold said that there are others in the imperial family also fighting for the throne but they are not even close to these three. Leonardo said that civil servants, military and magicians, each faction has a solid number of supporters, and the nobles take advantage of this and build up their own strength. This is the current situation of the War of Succession. It started three years ago when their older brother, the Crown Prince, died. Finn said she had heard about it. Her father used to say that if he were alive, the war for the throne would never have happened. Arnold said that on the other hand, it gave everyone else a chance. He thought there was something wrong here. 
brave and worthy. Their older brother was the best version of Leo combined with a wonderful character, so easily died on the battlefield. The Emperor's personal investigation proved that there was no trace of a conspiracy, but he can't get rid of the feeling that something evil is behind all this. But there's no point in continuing to think about a dead person. So he said that he was no longer here, and these three would show no mercy in the face of the enemy. The only way for him is to take the place of their elder brother and become Emperor, they have no other choice. Leonardo said he knew, but would he be able to cope? Then Arnold patted him on the back and told him to melt, because he would make sure that he could cope. Then a girl came into their room. It was Marie Vercchio who met Leo when she was looking for a job. Chosen for her potential, she works as Leo's assistant despite her civilian background. Leonardo turned to this girl and told her to let him introduce her. It's the Duke's daughters who call her Finney. Finney told Marie it was nice to meet her. Marie said it was mutual. She's Leonardo's maid, and let her just call her Marie. And if she's here, it means that. The Duke is on their side. And it's thanks to my brother, isn't it? Arnold said that was enough, because she was embarrassing him. Marie still calmly said that it was a great job. Arnold thought he was just fooling around, but in the end he praises him. As always, she is silent and emotionless. Due to her well-off personality, it seems that she doesn't have any kind feelings for him. It becomes more obvious when she's around him, and to be honest, he finds it difficult. Marie approached Leonard and, handing him the papers, said that this report was about two parties for whom he was preparing a trap. Leonardo thanked her and he, having opened this report, asked that how could this happen. Count Siegfried is under Her Highness Sandra and Baron Ballman is under His Highness Gordon. They outplayed them. The deciding factor is money, isn't it? Arnold said yes, it looks like both sides have received quite a large amount of money. There's nothing they can do about it, because both are in league with merchants, after all. They can't beat them with money. The Baron is closely connected with the Ministry of Defense, isn't he? If he can win over the Secretary of Defense, then most of the military will fall into Gordon's hands. The Defense Minister has not met with any of the main receivers at the moment, but who knows how long it will last. Marie intervened and said that she wanted to lure the Baron to their side, but not everything is going the way they want, after all. But then Leonardo said that, but there is progress. Finney is here and with them. This will most likely make things easier from now on. Finney said yes, she will also try her best. Then Arnold said that he would go for a while, rest, perhaps it was because they had ridden all the way on horseback and his back hurt. Leonardo smiled and told him not to talk like he was an old man. Arnold turned around and told his brother to try it himself at least once, and he would also get sick. After that, together with Finney, they went outside. Finney pointed out the road to him and asked what could they go this way. Arnold said yes, as she wanted. Finney apologized to him for having to constantly listen to her selfishness. Arnold said that if he accompanied her, he wouldn't mind. He thought it had been a few days since he had arrived in Finney in the capital. Finney's travels around the city caught the eye of the residents of the capital every day. Rumors that the Duke supported the prince began to spread. Based on this, it looks like this story is turning into a love affair between Prince Leonardo and Finney. But that in itself is not bad. It's just that when rumors start spreading in a good light, it would be a problem if they were seen together. That's why they stick to incognito. Finney asked him what and what is there. Arnold said it was an appraisal shop. And this, let her just call him Al. Finney asked if it would really be okay. Use an alias. Arnold said that just in case. It will be problematic if the prince is noticed with her. Finney asked if it was okay if she kept calling him that. Arnold said what did she want. The girl was delighted and said yes. Arnold thought, what is she having so much fun about? After that, they started looking at the children who were playing in a small clearing. Arnold said that what a nostalgia, then he used to run away from the castle and also played with the boys in the city. Finney asked if he really did it. Arnold said it was obvious that as a prince he shouldn't have been so self-willed. But even now, from time to time, he meets friends with whom he used to play. Finney said the friendship that transcends the title. She's jealous. She doesn't have many friends, after all. Arnold said she could make a lot of friends in the capital. There are a lot of bad and good people around, after all. Sinia said it would be great if she could make reliable friends. Arnold said it wasn't because they were friends now. Time doesn't matter for friendship though. But then the kids accidentally hit Finney with their magic. Arnold asked if she was okay. The children came up and asked her for forgiveness. Finney said it wasn't a big deal. It's alright. But when they saw her, everyone blushed. Arnold was horrified and grabbed the girl by the hand, dragged her along, saying that here. Finney asked, what is it? Arnold said that her clothes are translucent. Then Finney blushed very much and hid herself and asked what. Arnold said he knew the owner of an establishment nearby. 
They'll get her clothes there. After that, they came to the place Arnold was talking about. The man said that isn't it wonderful, such innocence. Arnold said just don't let it spread around much, okay. The man said yes, and he asked that it was still something new, wasn't it? It is rare to see him walking with a girl. Has this time come for him? Arnold said he could say whatever he wanted. Meanwhile, Finney had already changed her clothes and, going out to them, asked what about him. Arnold blushed a little and said that yes, it suits her. What does he think? Finney smiled and said she was glad Arnold had chosen him in the end. The man asked Arnold what he would pay, as always. Arnold said yes, he would let Sebastian or whoever else know a little later. So thanks to him, as always. The man said that then let them enjoy their date. Finney blushed and asked, what's the date? Arnold told this man that he was just taking her around the city so he wouldn't misunderstand him. After that, the two of them walked around a lot more. Arnold showed her all the surroundings, and the girl was very happy about it. Arnold thought that the sun was already setting. It's time to go back to the castle. Then someone came up to him and asked if it was really that stupid prince in front of him. Arnold thought he had met someone he didn't want to meet. This is Jide von Horveth. In his youth, he was good only in front of Leonardo, and he often bullied him from the moment he was abandoned by adults. The eldest son of a respectable and well-known family, and despite his reluctance, his childhood friend. Arnold asked what Jide was, didn't he? Is it rare to meet him here? The guy said he just saw a shabby-looking face that didn't look like a prince and decided it was him. Arnold said that well, thank you. Jai didn't like it, and he asked what kind of attitude is this. He stepped on Arnold's foot with his cane. He asked if he really thought he wouldn't hit him just because they were on the street. Even if he had hit him, no one would have cared. They wouldn't even notice. Arnold said he didn't know, because Leo is so popular these days. If he beat him, it would create a big problem. They have the same face, he knows that, doesn't he? The guy said he wasn't Leonard, and everyone knows about it. He needs to look at his behavior. Who would have thought that he was from the royal family? He swung this stick and said that he was not from the royal family at all. But then Finney came to Arnold's rescue. The guy shuddered and asked, what is Miss Finney? The girl said yes, her name is Finney, and who is he? Arnold clearly didn't like the girl's appearance here. He thought that let her just not complicate everything. If a huge fuss is formed around this, then, regardless of the result, only more problems will appear. The guy also introduced himself. When Finney heard his name, she asked him if he was fed up with the famous and venerable Duke of Horvath, wasn't it? What a shame. She was expecting someone who would behave more decently. Jide said it was all a mistake. It's Prince Arnold. Finney asked him if he really thought it was okay to do whatever he wanted just because he was a stupid prince. Does he have neither respect nor loyalty to the royal family? Arnold thought, let her stop already. It would be very bad if Finney publicly shamed him. If he beat him, the only thing that would suffer would be his reputation. It makes no sense to make enemies because of such nonsense. Finney asked this prince that besides, did he really think that she would go out with a stupid prince on her own? After that, she looked at Arnold. Arnold grinned and thought he had no choice, after which he said that it was disturbing. She doesn't want the rumors to spread, so he pretended to be his brother on purpose. Finney apologized and called him Leonard. Jai was shocked and asked what? Leonard. After that, Arnold used magic and made him look exactly like his brother. And I told my childhood friend that yes, I am him. The guy started mumbling and said that he was wrong. All this, Arnold said that everything was fine. He knows what he was doing to his brother, and as long as he doesn't say anything, he's not going to interfere. But he asks to excuse them for today, because he showed the capital to Finney after all. Jai thought it would be bad to make an enemy out of Leo, who should become the next emperor. So he said okay, he would go. After that, Arnold turned to the girl and asked that she went and did it, didn't she? Finney apologized. Arnold went further and said that people are looking so that they should leave. When they moved to a safe place, Arnold asked that she did it on purpose, didn't she? Finney said she was really sorry. Arnold said that if everything had remained as it is, the only thing that would have fallen is his reputation. However, now he will hold a grudge against her and his brother because of this. In addition, it will be more difficult for him from now on due to rumors that Leonard may be pretending to be him. Finney was really sorry, so after his layers she started crying. Arnold thought there was no point in blaming her for what had already happened. After that, he said that if she understood, then from now on she should not act without thinking twice, Otherwise they would not turn into problems. Finney said it was fine. Arnold was embarrassed and said that, however, he understands that she did it for him. And thanked her. She had so much fun, so let her forgive him that he left an unpleasant residue. Finney said no, she was careless. She'll be careful next time, so. Could he show her the city again? Arnold said yes, next time he would prepare the disguise properly. Finney smiled and said she was glad. 
Arnold thought her smile was worth showing her the city again. After that, Arnold came to his brother. Leonardo asked if it wasn't rare that their father called them. I wonder why. Arnold said it usually happens once a year. Maybe he has something to say. Leonard said he hoped he would say something nice. Arnold said that he is sure that in 10 out of 10 cases nothing good promises them. Leonard said that they still believe in the good, and he has to put on his mantle, right, or his father will scold him again. Arnold said yes, he understood. After that, they went inside the room. There were already three prince, two prince and three princess. Arnold thought that it looked like all the princes and princesses had already gathered in the capital. On the throne sat their father, whose name is Johan. He said it looked like everything was already in place. It might be a little unexpected, but he wants them all to compete with each other. But the usual contest of strength is too boring. To this end, he plans to resurrect a festival that was forgotten decades ago. A night hunting festival will be held, and the winner will get a huge advantage on the way to the crown. Arnold thought that a huge advantage on the way to the crown. Gordon said stop beating around the bush. Isn't it easier to hold a contest by force? Arnold thought that Gordon was a general who loved war and was also the strongest warrior among the princes. If this guy becomes the emperor, then he will begin an endless expansion of imperial territories. People will be dragged into a war they never wanted. Johan said not so fast. How will a ten-year-old boy have the strength to compete with him? The tenth prince, whose name is Rupert, was also present there. Free the princess said that everything was right. He should at least think a little. Even a walking muscle like him should have at least a drop of logic. Arnold thought she was the cruelest among them. She has delved into the study of necromancy so she can resurrect the dead. If she becomes emperor, then the empire will turn into a magical superpower where countless experiments will be allowed. Gordon was very angry and said that such a weak magician like her. He can crush her with his finger, she knows that, doesn't she? The girl said that wasn't he always talking about military honor, death on the battlefield. Hey, should I give it to him? Arnold thought that these two, as always, were dangerous. But do they understand that they are standing in front of the emperor? Then someone ran forward and apologized for the rudeness of his brothers and sisters. It was Eric. He is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is responsible for the foreign policy of the empire. He is a genius and his intelligence is rated above the crown prince. At the moment, he is the closest person to the throne. He would have killed them without a doubt, in order to prevent outbreaks of uprisings in the future. If he becomes emperor, then the empire of you will be safe. The emperor told Eric that everything was fine. Is rivalry a good thing? So he became an emperor himself, after all. So now he will explain to them the essence of the festival. Night hunting festival. On it, the imperial order of knights compete with each other in the hunt for monsters. Papier do is determined by the rarity and size of the captured monster. The festival was often held at a time when there were many monsters in the empire. But today the adventurers have become so prettier that the need for it has disappeared. Arnold thought that the Imperial Order of Chivalry, to involve the Imperial Knight Order, which reports directly to the Emperor, means that everything is very serious. Eric said he understood. Recently, monsters have become more active. However, then the adventurers will not have a job. Does he really think the Guild will approve of this? The Emperor said he didn't have to worry about it, because he had already received permission from the Guild. Last time they failed to cope with the attacks of monsters in various areas, so they are glad of their help. Arnold thought it was interesting. He even imagined how it happened. The man said that the Empire really pays the costs of the guild, but for some reason there are no fewer monsters. The girl apologized. The man said that the state plans to hold a festival that will be dedicated to hunting monsters, and they will approve of it, won't they? The girl said no, and it's a little. Then the man asked what could be, and not then will they find good and adventurers who will do something with monsters. The girl said that this is also a little. The man told her to choose one of two. Then the girl said that it was fine, and then they could hold a festival. Arnold thought that was how it happened. The guild is in a narrow circle between the Empire and the adventurers. If they do not take counter measures, then damage will be caused to people, their crops and adventurers as well. In this sense, it is an ingenious plan to involve elite Imperial Knights in the hunt for monsters. The festival will not only bring profit, but also up to 100 people's safety. As expected of the Emperor, he came up with an excellent strategy. However, it is unclear how he intends to involve them in the festival. Eric said he understood. In short, he wants them to run knightly orders, doesn't he? The Emperor said that, as expected from him, he guessed correctly. He will personally present knightly orders to them. They can go hunting with them, or relax and hope for a good result. Arnold thought that they could go hunting with them, or relax and hope for a good result. A knight will not swear allegiance to those who cannot even fight alongside them. 
this is a big blow to the chances of claiming the throne. Even if he can't fight, then he should at least have the determination to stand on the same battlefield as them. This is exactly what the Emperors wanted to say. Then Gordon said that he would like to know about the award. The Emperor said it was a very good question. The winner will receive the position of plenipotentiary after the Empire. Everyone was very surprised. The position of plenipotentiary after the Empire is the highest diplomatic position. Such a handout guarantees diplomatic immunity and the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Emperor. After that, Arnold came to Feeney and Sebastian. Sebastian said it was only more complicated, didn't he? Arnold said yes, it didn't make it any easier for them. Finney said she thought it was still a good opportunity for them. Everyone will be given an equal number of nights. Arnold laughed, then sighed. Finney blushed and asked that he wasn't laughing at her, right? She doesn't understand that much. Arnold said that she would be treated as the next emperor in the country she would be sent away and she would also have the opportunity to improve relations between the countries. This is definitely a chance for Leo to become an ambassador. On the other hand, if one of their three competitors becomes an ambassador, then the hole they closed will open again. Unlike those two, they don't have much strength to grit their teeth and refrain from participating. And if that happens, they will have to get out of the inheritance war. Finney asked what was the matter. This is very bad, and he needs to hurry up and do something about it. Arnold asked Sebastian if he had already gathered any information. Sebastian said that not as much as he would like. He took out the papers and said it looked like the knights themselves only found out about it yesterday. Most likely, the decision was made behind closed doors by the Emperor and his advisors. If that's the case, then their options will be limited. The decisive factor will be the luck and skills of the candidate. Arnold thought that regardless of whether they would meet a rare monster or not, good luck will decide everything. It doesn't matter how much power they have, if they don't have a chance to show it. Did Sebastian say there was more information? The Order of Knights expects that the festival will be held in the eastern part of the Empire. Arnold asked why. Sebastian said that the most damage from the monsters was caused to the eastern part and it looks like they will have to deploy there. Arnold said that it turns out that he specially prepared the site for the festival. This is very similar to the father. Sebastian said that if the eastern part becomes the center of the festival, a lot of tourists will rush there. This will simplify the rebuilding of the destroyed territories. The knightly orders of you will be sent to the eastern part and will only get there in a couple of days. They will hunt and compete in the number of killed and their rarity, and the emperor himself will choose the winner in the end. Arnold said that influential people from all over the empire would come to watch the festival, so it would be very difficult. Then Finney said she had an idea. She thinks Arnold should take first place. Arnold and Sebastian looked at her. After that, Arnold said that he had been waiting for something good in vain. Sebastian explained to the girl that Arnold would continue to play the role of the stupid prince. If he showed his real self, it would be too suspicious. Finney blushed and said she understood. But other than that, aren't there any other options? Arnold said that her idea has a place to be, but then they will lose an ace up their sleeve. And it will also be harder for Leo to become emperor. In addition, their popularity will be divided. This is in any case a bad option, no matter how you look at it. However, they have no trump cards and they have nothing to play with in this situation. That Troika will most likely lure some rare monster to the eastern part. Or they can find out the location of a rare monster, but they don't have enough people to do it. Can he do something approximately similar? You can just drive away all the monsters. The eastern part is a silver. Finney said he couldn't do that. Arnold looked at Sebastian and smiled. He thought that as he thought, she was just like Leo, and said it was true. If he does, then people who live in the eastern part may suffer even more before the festival begins. That's why they're not going to do that. Leo wouldn't support it either. Finney said is it really true? She's so excited. But then I realized what I said and apologized. She said that she said something again without thinking, even though he would never do such a thing. Arnold said it was all right. She can say whatever comes into her head. Her opinion is always correct and fair. Finney asked what he meant by that. Sebastian said that he wanted to say that he likes her the way she is. Hearing this, the girl blushed deeply. Arnold told Sebastian that he didn't remember Oba saying that. Sebastian asked if he hated her then. Arnold said no, but Sebastian interrupted him and said that then they would assume that he liked her. And I asked Finney if it wasn't wonderful. Finn was not happy and said yes. Arnold thought that okay, well, figs with him. There was a knock on their door. Leonardo came into the room with Marie. Leonard apologized for the intrusion and asked if he was interrupting them. Arnold said they were going to discuss how to make him a plenipotentiary ambassador of the Empire. Leonard said he thinks he should take the position. Arnold asked if he really thought he would be able to build relations between states. Leonardo smiled and said that yes, he thought so. 
Arnold put his hand on his brother's shoulder and said that well, thank you. But in all seriousness, he won't be able to win this hunting festival. Only he can do it. Leonard said that was true, but he would hate him. The idea that their opponents are brothers and sisters. It only pushes him away. Arnold asked what and what. Does he really want to give up? Leonard said that if circumstances allowed, he would not have participated in the fight. Mom, brother and people who want to follow him. The responsibility for their future lies with him. He needs to win. Otherwise, everyone else will not be able to enjoy life for the rest of their days. Arnold said it was good that he understood that. He thought that the three of them would not show mercy. This is obviously in connection with the recent assassination of General Dominic. They know they have no options left. There was still a bit of humanity in them when they killed the crown prince. However, the protracted battle for the throne has changed them all. These guys no longer have feelings for their family, so they have no choice but to participate in the struggle for inheritance. For the good of all the people who live in the empire. In addition, they will have problems if Leo does not become the heir. Leo should have the same opinion. Among the princes, he understands the crown prince the most. But Leo is not a realist like the crown prince. An idealist. He is easily moved by emotions. He decided to join the battle not because of the general's murder, but because he had admired the crown prince since childhood. He is more than sure that he intends to become something like a crown prince. Leonard said that his strength alone was not enough. He wants them to lend it to him. Arnold said yes. After that, Silver went to destroy the monster. This monster was an AAA rank Kerbers. After killing this monster, Silver thought that this was because the guild was making requests to him two times a month. It seems that there are really more monsters in the Empire. Then someone ran up to him and asked what the explosion was. It was his job, wasn't it? Arnold asked what, and what if yes? How about telling me your name first? The girl said that the Knight of the Order of the Empire, Captain of the Third Corps Elna von Amsberg. The girl said she was here because she heard about Cerberus showing up. But it looks like he's already dealt with it, doesn't it? Arnold thought it was Arlberg. The contributing countries would tremble upon hearing this surname. They are the descendants of the great hero who defeated the demon lord who shook the entire continent 500 years ago. After defeating him, the emperor wanted the hero to remain in the empire. The heroes did not want the status of marquis or duke. He refused the reward and wanted to go on a trip. Then the emperor offered the hero a unique peerage title and power over the entire continent. And this marked the beginning of the brave house, the highest rank among the imperial aristocrats, even above the prince. They bow to no one except the emperor, but no one was indignant, because they deserve such treatment. No, more than worthy for their accumulated merit over hundreds of years. Guardian of the empire, an heiress worthy of this title is Elma. She was not only the one who protected him as a child, but also the one who trained him in Spartan conditions. She is his complete opposite. He dares to say what she did was a real mockery, but his face is hidden. At the moment he is not Arnold, but Silver, and he's not afraid of her. He asked the girl what, but isn't this visible? Or does the lady of the brave house have vision problems? The girl said, what did he just say? Hearing this, Arnold shuddered and thought that all the resentment for the past had really jumped out of him just now. This is bad. The girl said that judging by his appearance, he might not be an SS rank silver adventurer. He's quite cocky for a failed adventurer, isn't he? Arnold thought it was an evil smile. This is very bad. Nothing good will come of it if he continues to argue with her, so he needs to resolve the situation. The girl said that from the moment he settled in the capital, people began to call him her guardian, and she understands that he wants to challenge the Armstrong house. Silver said that's what people say. No, he took that nickname for himself. She should calm down, because he has no interest in such things. And he himself thought, okay, how about this? He shows her that he is not the enemy. The girl asked that he really wanted to say that the House of Aramsburg lays claim to such an insignificant nickname. Or he wants to say that he didn't mean it. One way or another, this is a provocation, isn't it? Arnold thought that things were bad, but there was nowhere to run. One already has a bad impression of him, so anything he says will be perceived negatively by her. She hated losing. As soon as someone starts a fight with her, she will fight until the moment she wipes the floor with her opponents. What if it comes to that? It's impossible to be on friendly terms with her. He'll just have to go on the offensive. So he said it looked like she was aware of him. Brave House truly values its fame. The girl asked what? Silver said that he couldn't put up with the fact that others could also be praised. She must be very petty. The girl said that she would not forgive anyone who said such impudent things towards her house. Silver said isn't she the only one here who is cocky? He killed the monster as per the guild's request. But based on what she said before, she also intended to kill him, didn't she? Isn't this a provocation towards the guild? The girl said that she had no such intentions. She thought about people. 
Then the man who was behind her asked her to wait, even if there was a misunderstanding between them. If it was a request from the Adventurers Guild, then they would already be at fault. Besides, it's time for them to hurry to the capital. The girl turned around and said goodbye to the server so that he would remember this. Those who defend the Empire are the brave house, knights and soldiers, and definitely not them, the adventurers. Silver said he would remember this, although he may immediately forget about it. The girl said yes, damn him. After she left, Arnold thought that she was in his hands. Does it feel that good? Now he knows that feeling of revenge is a child who was bullied. But this does not change the fact that he has made an unnecessary enemy. What is he doing? If the House of Arlberg decides to be hostile to them, it will be entirely his fault. He did it. A few days later, Arnold was sitting in his office and told Silver that today was a memorable day. The door will be opened by the captain of the Imperial Corps, who will join him. Well, who does he think will come? For the sake of ensuring a balance of forces, this should be one of the high-ranking captains. All will do except Elna. Sebastian said she was an extraordinary child of the brave House of Armsburg who joined the Order of Knighthood at age 11 and became a captain at 14. Does he know this? Wouldn't it be great to have her on their side? Arnold said that her abilities alone were undoubtedly good, but he could not cope with her character. Sebastian said that she is known for her high moral character, however, it is said that she could become the next head of the Order of Knighthood. Arnold said it's just on the outside, that's just how she is. Neither the knights nor the people saw her true essence. This woman is like a devil. Then this girl came to him and asked who was he calling the devil. Seeing her, Arnold told Sebastian to call the guards, the devil appeared. Sebastian said that, unfortunately, he didn't think anyone would come. The strongest knight, and so here as well. The girl said that, as expected from Sebastian, although he understands it. After that, she turned to Arnold and said that the knightly order of the Empire, captain of the Third Corps, Elna von Armsburg had arrived at their disposal. It had been several years since they last met, but he never seemed to change. Arnold asked what is this sarcasm? The girl said yes, of course, it seems that he is very popular in the capital. Everyone calls him the stupid prince. Isn't this wonderful? Arnold said that yes, he enjoys life thanks to her and he himself thought that even if they had not seen each other for years, they were still childhood friends. Even though he is the prince of the imperial family and she is the daughter of a brave house, they know each other well. After that, Arnold asked what and why she was here. The girl asked that he really couldn't guess. Arnold said that even he couldn't believe it. The girl said that it was so rude of him, she had to try hard, does he know? She had to personally ask the emperor to become his captain. Arnold told her not to do unnecessary things, because his brother and sister would target him. The girl said that there is no need to worry about such things, they are claiming the throne, right? Arnold said that's not the point, let it all go to hell. Why did she remain the same? He thought that he understood that she did this thinking about him, but this did not fit with his goals. If she really asked her father for something like that, then he would prefer her to be on Leo's side. The fact that she's here means he's become one of the favorites. This will make it more difficult to be free to do anything. After all, she is the type of personality that attracts attention. It is safe to say that no secret operations can be carried out anymore. It would be a problem if she joined someone else, but having her with him would only make it even more of a problem. That's all Elna. The problem wasn't even their compatibility. He really didn't want her to be with him. The girl said that she personally wins this competition for him. They must make people take back their words. Arnold said he didn't need it. The girl told him not to be like that, because she had already told the emperor that she would take care of him. Arnold said it was not necessary to do this. The girl said that this is why from now on he will have a special training, but for now they need to see how successful he is in high riding. They head to the training ground. Arnold told Sebastian that he had a headache, it could be serious. Sebastian said it was definitely bad. This is a mental disorder called a fake disease. If they train their mind and heart, then maybe this will all pass. The girl grabbed him by the collar and told him to hurry up, because he had to go already. Arnold thought that they should leave him alone already. After training with the girl, Arnold was completely tired. He was now lying on the bed, and Finney was helping him recover. The girl said that she would try to be more gentle. Arnold thought that all the muscles in his back hurt. There is very little time left before the start of the night festival, not that a few days of training will change anything. He will definitely die if things continue like this day after day. In one of the training sessions, Sebastian approached Arnold and said that Elna had told him that today's training would start at 2 noon. Arnold asked if she would ever forget the word training. Finney said as expected from the man who is being dubbed the second coming of a hero. 
but aren't they equal in strength? How about horseback riding? Sebastien said that Arnold specializes in ancient magic, so his physical strength is lower than that of an ordinary person. Horsemanship, swordsmanship, modern magic. He didn't put much effort into training these things, so he doesn't have outstanding results. Feeney asked that is this really so? She thought that all adventurers were strong. Arnold said most of them, yes. He uses ancient magic to compensate for his physical weakness, so he doesn't train his body. Sebastian said that the last time he did not use magic and teleportation was when he rode a horse to the cleaner to state. But even so, he still strengthened his body. As Elna said, comma without ancient magic, he is a weakling. Arnold thought he was too weak to handle it. Sebastian said it all depends on how you look at it. Whether it's hard for him or not, this is a great opportunity for Leonardo. Arnold said that's right. Finney again did not understand what they were talking about and asked what they were talking about. Arnold said that Elna is known as the strongest knight. Even if he wins, no one will believe that this is his achievement. Sebastian, that's it. As Feeney said the other day, if Leonard can't win, then the best option would be for Arnold to win. Although if Arnold suddenly wins, then they have the strongest card in their hands. Finney said she understood. This means that Arnold will finally pull himself together, right? Arnold said that even if he doesn't do anything special, Elna will do everything for him. If he doesn't fool her and disturb her, then they will win. Sebastian said that this was probably the reason the Emperor allowed her to look after him. He expects him to fool her. Finney said that. But his majesty never expected to unite the strongest knight and the strongest adventurer into one team. Arnold said that even in the worst case scenario, he would still have won. But it's better if Leo wins. If I didn't ask why. If Leo became an ambassador and started building relationships with other countries, wouldn't Leon start doing the same? Arnold said it didn't matter. Leo fits this better than him. Feeney asked that he just found the position of ambassador difficult, didn't he? Sebastian and Finney sighed. After that, she turned to Arnold and asked if he was putting too much of everything on Leo. Arnold thought he was shifting. Finney said that she remembers him saying that because he does everything for Leo. Sebastian told the girl that she didn't seem to understand something. He just finds it difficult. Arnold told Feeney that this was an old habit of his, and he can't do anything about it. Give up the throne, the position of ambassador, and so on. Feeney said she knew it. He does good things, but you shouldn't overdo it. Leo would be upset too. Sebastian said that he does not approve of lying to this girl. Arnold said that he was not deceiving her, just misleading her. Sebastian asked what Elna would do to him if he heard something like this, does he understand this? He is jealous that he has such a caring childhood friend. Arnold said it was just annoying, especially when she does a lot of unnecessary things. But then Elna suddenly entered the room and heard everything. She asked that he was saying a lot of unnecessary things, wasn't he? Arnold said she even came in when he didn't call her. Isn't this considered unnecessary? Elna said that it was so rude that she heard that someone couldn't get out of bed because of muscle pain, so she specially brought him some ointment. Arnold said that he was already fine, because he had already been treated by a person hundreds of times more gentle than her. Elna asked what? Isn't this Miss Blau? Fi didn't say yes. She's very pleased to meet you. And she introduced herself. Elna did the same and said that Leo's room was a different place, but she didn't expect to find her in Arnold's room. Arnold, watching their conversation, saw Elna smile and thought that the essence of this smile was different from the one she usually showed him. The smile of a manipulator and nothing more. After the conversation with Finn, Elna did not turn to Arnold and said that he was making fun of her there. Arnold said she imagined it. Elna said she was hopeful and now they had to go. He seemed to say that he was fine, so now it was time for training. Arnold was shocked and asked what? That's not what he meant. Arnold told her to wait because she knew he was hurt. But Elna had already dragged him along and said that muscle pain was not a wound, so it would all go away with time. After this workout, Arnold came back and thought that now his whole body hurt. He stopped at one of the walls and, using magic, opened a secret door. Going downstairs, he opened the book and said that his magical research was amazing, as always. There he met his grandfather. Arnold asked his grandfather if he was tired of sitting here all the time. This grandfather's name is Gustav, and he is his great-grandfather and part-time emperor two generations ago. He taught him ancient magic. Gustav continued to turn the pages of the book and said that, despite all these years, the mystery of magic has still not been solved. Arnold said his research ultimately sealed him in the book. People called him a mad emperor, does he know this? Gustav said that he thought that a demon had taken over his body. A terrible mistake. Arnold said seriously, he's so frivolous. It's his fault that he has to hide his powers. And he himself thought that the demon that had taken possession of his body had devastated the imperial capital. 
History books say that while researching ancient magic, he went crazy. One of the reasons why ancient magic is forbidden in the imperial family. Gustav told him to look at it differently. Because he was locked here, he was able to study ancient magic, didn't he? His expensive silver mask came in handy too, didn't it? Arnold said yes. Gustav said that what an ungrateful great-great-grandson he was. And he asked that he came to talk about something, didn't he? He doesn't need to be shy. Arnold said his brother was in a battle for the throne. Gustav said that if he is a capable guy, then he will succeed. This is what the war for the throne is all about. Arnold said that he thought so too, but he needed to check if someone deliberately involved him in this. But that's what he did. If you are an opponent, then he could openly resolve this issue in the end. He thought that this was something that always bothered him. No matter how much the old general did not patronize Leo, he would not pose a threat to the others. However, with the assassination of the general early on, they were forced to make a choice. Their true intention is to use the agreements on the left as a pretext to involve them in a war for the throne. Arnold sat down on the table and said he had a question. Gustav said that if he were the second or third prince, he would have killed the crown prince. Here is his answer. Arnold said yes, but he hasn't asked anything yet. Gustav said that he thought that he would ask him this question at some point. He was the eldest son, so he survived many assassination attempts. In his opinion, the version that he committed suicide is bad. Arnold said that even his father's investigation showed that he died during the battle. Does he understand this? Gustav said that maybe the traces were well covered or that those close to the emperor were involved in this. Maybe even the emperor himself is involved in this. Even if he imagined that his younger brother was on the battlefield, he would do everything to protect him. Right. In any case, it is very strange for the crown prince to die like this on the battlefield. Arnold said, of course. This is his answer. There are many people in the world who think the same. Gustav said that even if they could not protect him, it still seems like a conspiracy. Given the history of past heritage wars, this is not uncommon. Arnold thought that if all of Grandpa's guesses were correct, then everything that would happen next was someone else's script. In other words, there is something more behind the nightly hunting festival. After that, he asked that there is magic that can control monsters. Gustav immediately perked up and asked what they were really talking about magic. Great, let him tell him more. Arnold was a little surprised and thought that he answered so quickly. After that, he said that recently the number of monsters has increased throughout the empire. Among them there are rare and very powerful monsters. He thinks someone is controlling them. Gustav said that if it's just a couple of monsters, then they can be controlled using magic. But there is no magic that would be able to control such a large area. Arnold said that's it. He probably thought of something a little unnecessary. And he himself thought that he thought that there could be a second princess behind this. But if grandfather said that such magic does not exist, then it really does not exist. In that case, it's just a coincidence that there are more monsters, isn't it? Then Gustav said that such magic does not exist, but there is an artifact. Arnold asked what the artifact was. Gustav said that there is an ancient magical artifact. He plays a tune that the monsters like and lures them. Arnold asked if such a thing really existed. Gustav said that according to the book, yes, and I started looking for this book. He said that this flute is called a Hamelin. If a person with enormous magical power can play it well, then the monsters will disperse throughout the empire. Arnold thought that an era where magic is more advanced than now. The artifacts they owned are superior to anything they have now. Such artifacts are usually found in ruins and become national treasures in some countries, but there are also those that appear at unexpected times. Arnold said that a nightly hunting festival would be held very soon. Each member of the imperial family will lead the knights on the hunt. Gustav said that the current emperor had done something really interesting, and he asked what? What about the reward? Arnold said that the position of ambassador plenipotentiary. They can't afford to lose this festival. However, if the flute is in the ruins of their opponent, then they have no chance of winning. Gustav said that everything was correct. If they use the flute correctly, they are guaranteed victory. But if it were him, he would not have used such an idiotic method. Arnold thought that oh it's true, if one of his three relatives used such an artifact, then the other two would be included, and he would start pursuing him even in the war of succession if he did something that caused trouble for the empire. Then the consequences cannot be avoided. In other words, he said that the puppeteers are not taking part in the war of inheritance, right? Gustav said yes, regardless of whether this person is connected with the main contenders or not. If it is not difficult for him to fill the entire empire with monsters or harm the country in other ways, then the position of ambassador plenipotentiary will definitely not satisfy him. Arnold thought that now the problem is no longer to win the festival. 
If they don't find out who is behind this, then the hunting festival will no longer be just a battle for the position of ambassador. He asked his grandfather, is there any way to prevent the effect of this flute? Gustav said that only if the artifact itself is not destroyed, then no. Stopping the sound of a flute is very difficult. Arnold said that in short he just needed to focus on the festival. Arnold said exactly that. The same goes for the others. They could not know exactly when this festival would be held or not. In other words, they were using the monsters for something else before they even announced it. There is definitely something behind the festival. He must not let his guard down. After this, Arnold left his grandfather's room. Then someone appeared behind him and told him not to move. Arnold thought he had already arrived, much faster than he expected. He asked the man what he was saying, knowing that he was Arnold, wasn't he? This man took out a knife and said that of course he knew to kill, he was not going to kill him, so he would just sleep a little. Arnold said yes, of course he would if he could. After that, he used his magic. He sealed the man so that he could not leave the circle. The man asked what he did. Arnold said his decision to click to avoid being killed by mistake backfired on him. During this moment, he managed to create a barrier that immobilized him. In addition, there is a search spell located around the perimeter, so it is absolutely impossible to sneak up on it. The man still tried to get out of there and asked that wasn't he a mediocre prince. Arnold told him to calm down and answer his questions first. Someone helped him get into the tightly guarded castle, right? Who was that? The man told him not to underestimate him. He would rather die than give him a customer. Arnold said that means he's not in denial. Okay, he got it. And he himself thought that three relatives could influence the security of the castle. The rest will have to put in a lot of effort, so they disappear. He said that his goal was to prevent him from taking part in the night's hunting festival so that Elna would retreat. This idea is easy to see through. Of course, he took the necessary measures. The man said the same thing could be said about him. And he called someone. But then Sebastian came up behind Arnold and said that it looked like the four of them were acting together. He neutralized the other three. Arnold said he did a good job. The man was horrified and asked what. Sebastian asked that did he really think that he would let Alfred roam one. Looks like he was underestimated. Arnold turned to the man and told him that he had to confess. Who hired him? After that, he used one more magic. The man grabbed his head and began to ask Sandra for forgiveness. He fell to his knees and told Sandra that he hadn't said anything. He didn't say anything. Sebastian said that the method of transmitting to the test subject the most vivid horror experienced is the most effective. Arnold said that this means that Princess Sandra sent the killer. It looks like she trained him quite harshly. Sebastian said it was so like her to force loyalty through fear. And he asked Arnold what he would like to do. Arnold thought that Sandra tried to eliminate him because she had her sights set on the ambassadorial position. Since she offers such efforts in this festival, luring out monsters is not her doing. He told Sebastian that even if he talked about him, it wouldn't hurt Sandra. They can kill him, but there will be a problem with removing the corpse. So let him hide it in a secluded place. It might come in handy later. Sebastian said it was accepted. A few days later, Arnold and Finney were riding in a carriage. Arnold asked who planned this. Fi didn't ask what. Arnold said yes, that's okay. Then the girl looked out the window and told Arnold that she could already see it. Arnold said that this was the opening site of the night's hunting festival. And it's called a keel. Keel, night hunting tournament. The night before the tournament, Arnold remembered the words of his grandfather, who said that something would happen during the festival that he should not let his guard down. Then a date ran up to him, changed her clothes and apologized for keeping him waiting. Arnold said that he wouldn't say that he was waiting for her that long. Feeney said that's how it is, and she asked if it suited her. Arnold thought that he found these glasses in his grandfather's room. They are able to create a slight illusion. To outsiders, Feeney now looks like an ordinary girl. True, this will not work for experienced magicians and those who know her well. But in the city these glasses will be of little use. Arnold blushed a little and said yes. Finney thanked him for accepting her invitation. And she said that they should have a lot of fun today. Arnold said that's what they would do. But he himself thought that he didn't have any compelling reasons for refusing. He said that they would go and immediately walk around the counters. Finney said yes. They need to win everywhere. Arnold said he thought it was impossible. What did Finney tell him he could do? Arnold said that. Well, he will try. After some time, Finney grabbed her stomach and said that her stomach was full. Arnold brought her a drink and said that if she wanted to win everywhere, then she had to eat little by little. The girl took the water and said that, but she was embarrassed in front of the one who prepared all those dishes. Arnold said that you wouldn't think that these words were uttered by the duke's daughter. Feeney said the food was simply amazing. Arnold said that just admiring it without eating anything is also fun, she knows. Feeney asked that this kind of fun really exists. 
Arnold said that of course there is. First, she should rest a little, and then they will continue to walk. Finney said that's good, but it won't work right now. And they saw Leo and Marie in the crowd. Finney asked that I wonder what happened. Arnold said that it didn't look like they were on a date, most likely they were here for work. Leo is very hardworking. Then Leonardo noticed the two of them and approached them. Leonardo asked that they were really on a date. Finney said happily that it was a date. Arnold asked what is similar. Leonardo said he looked a little strange. Arnold asked his brother that he had better tell him where he intended to get into again. Leonardo said they say there are thefts happening all over the place. Arnold was a little surprised and asked what theft was. Are they hunting for something specific? Leonardo said that they looked like precious stones. Therefore, Finns should also be a little more careful. Finney looked at him in surprise and then remembered her hair clip. Arnold asked that maybe they would come back for a while. He thinks that today it can be removed. The girl said how could it be? This will take time. Apart from the fact that it is a gift from his majesty, this is her favorite hairpin. Well, if he's that worried, she'll take it off. Then Arnold felt something and thought that something had really penetrated his barrier. Then they saw that some small animal was curling around their feet. Finney leaned over to him and said that he was so small and cute. What a cutie wife, Arnold thought. What kind of strange feeling is this? It seems to him that he has already seen this somewhere. He asked his brother what it was called. Leonardo said that he remembers seeing something like this in the past. Then Marie intervened and said that these small animals live in the west of the continent. They call with affection or ordinary affection. Two brothers turned to her at the same time and said that's for sure. Arnold thought, why are they in a city in the east? Meanwhile, this weasel was climbing on Finney. Finney said no. It tickles. The weasel got under her clothes and began to climb there. Maria approached the girl and told her kindly to crawl out of there. Then Arnold noticed that another weasel was running. And this weasel set its sights on Marie. Leonardo and Arnold blushed. Leonardo closed his eyes and asked what to do. They need to help them somehow. Arnold was also all red and said that even if this was the case, they couldn't put their hands in there. After some time, the weasels ran away on their own. Marie said that these animals, she couldn't let them just leave. Arnold said there was a new problem. Leonard said that they were fooled, apparently, by these weasels, and there is a trick of the thieves and jewelry. Then Finney discovered that the decoration that the emperor had given her was missing. Arnold told her that if she apologized, his father would not be offended by her, but it was better not to make a fuss. They will try to look for themselves. Leonardo said he was right. Then he will search with Marie. Leonardo asked Marie if anything had been stolen from her. Mary said no. Leonardo said that apparently they were only taught to steal jewelry. It is possible that the robber is not even one. Arnold turned to the Feenies and said that they should go too. The girl said she was coming back. Arnold asked if she was very worried. The girl started crying and said that she called Arnold because she wanted him to rest. However, she brought him problems again. Would it be better if she stayed out of the way? Arnold patted her on the head and said that he would feel better if she was nearby. Therefore, let her not say that she is nothing but problems. She should not worry because they will quickly find her hairpin. Feeney said that, but they had lost sight of them. Arnold said everything was fine. Finding them is not a problem for him. The girl said that. But if magic is used to catch them now, then his magical power may not be enough for tomorrow's festival. Arnold asked that she really thought he solved everything with magic. The girl said she didn't say that. Arnold said that although these animals are smart, they are still animals. If you think about it this way, a lot will become clear. Finney said that she didn't think that if they looked now, then. Arnold interrupted her and said that he wasn't looking for them. He is looking for the one who called them to himself. The girl asked what she called to herself. Arnold said that they could be trained to get under girls' clothes and steal jewelry, but if they took the things somewhere far away, then obstacles would certainly arise. Moreover, there are a lot of people walking now. Feeney said that, but he's right. Then it turns out that the culprit is nearby, right? Arnold said that if such dangerous maneuvers were to be performed, there was no point in using weasels. There must be some kind of trick. And he also thought that she too should be where these animals passed. Then he found something and said that it was just as he thought. Feeney asked what is this? Arnold said it was a sound stone. A stone that produces a recorded sound at a set time. It is often used to lure monsters. Having set a certain period of time through the stone, he reproduces the female's voice, to which the male goes to the right place. That's it. And as a gift for his partner, he will bring a hair clip. And someone uses their features for their own profit. The girl said it was cruel. It's so obscene. Arnold said they would definitely catch him. Finney said yes. After that, the two of them began searching. After some time, Finn found something, and joyfully ran to Arnold, saying that she also found it here. Arnold said she was great. 
but then the girl tripped, but Arnold caught her so she wouldn't fall to the ground, and it turned out that they almost kissed. Both blushed very hard and pulled away from each other. Feeney asked him for forgiveness. Arnold said that it was nothing, and that she would forgive him too. Then a weasel approached the girl's feet and began to rub herself. The girl leaned over to him and stroked him and said that everything was fine. They will help him now. Arnold said that apparently they were already very close, so they have to go. They hid behind a building and began to watch. The girl asked that this is where the criminal's lair is, isn't it? Arnold said yes, and they need to catch him. So he used his magic and became Leonard again. He went out and called out to these guards. The guards recognized him immediately, so Arnold said that they should gather knights from the surrounding area. They found the jewel thief's lair. One of the guards said is expected from Prince Leonardo. Another man said that they would gather them all right away. Arnold thought that even the Eastern Knights had a good ear for Leo. Then he noticed the girl and asked what it was. Finn looked a little upset and said that, but he was the one who caught him. Arnold said that on his behalf the Knights would not budge. If he runs away, they'll be in trouble, right? The girl said that it was so, but again all the laurels would go to Leo. Arnold asked that they didn't take her in, is it that worrying? It's not that bad, is it? In this case, Leo will benefit in the fight for the throne. After that, they, together with the knights, broke into the den of criminals. The knights told them not to move. The kidnappers asked how they knew they were here. After this, all the kidnappers were caught, and Finney noticed a cage in which sat a weasel who stole her hairpin. The girl was very happy and said that she had found it. Then a guard approached her and told her not to touch the stolen things until they identified their owners. Arnold told him not to worry, because they would determine everything now. I told the girl to take off her glasses. The girl said it was good. After this, Arnold said that he was sure that they all knew her well. After all, this is the Duke's daughter, the Blue Seagull. The stolen hairpin belonged to her, so he was looking for the culprit. He put his hand on the shoulder of one of the knights and said that only trusted persons know about this. If his father finds out that his father's gift was stolen, the watchmen and guards will be reprimanded. The heads of the knights may even fly. They can tell someone about it, but they themselves will suffer from it. So he really hopes for their understanding. The knights said yes, they didn't see anything. As he was leaving, Arnold said that they had helped a lot. When they went outside, Arnold became himself again. He said that now all that was left was to explain everything to Leo. Feeney thanked him for his help and said that it was all thanks to him. Arnold said he didn't do anything special. Then the girl stopped and said that she didn't care if no one knew about his achievements, because the main thing was that she knew. She will always remember how gifted and wonderful he is, always and forever. Arnold smiled and said that's how it is. Then he counts on her in the future. The girl said that someday she would write a book and tell without concealment about his deeds. Arnold said we could do without it. The girl asked why. 11.1 Chapter Arnold and Leonardo watched the celebration. Arnold said that as he expected from public holidays, the area is very lively. Leonardo said it was true. This is very cool. He thinks that such a fun time, they need thanks to the fact that his father distributed the money. People can enjoy the festival. After all, the people in the eastern part were very worried about the monsters. Then Elna appeared and said that this is where he was. Leonardo greeted her and asked what was her mood. Elna said that she was tired just before the competition. Morally, Arnold said it appears she was harnessed due to a lack of people in the area. Elna said that she was monitoring the unrest among the commoners, chasing mission violators, which she was not particularly involved in. It wasn't easy. And by the way, what were the two of them doing? Leonardo said he was the same as usual, just a little tired emotionally. Elna asked what happened. Leonardo said that he had recently walked through those villages that had suffered from monsters. He believes that it is the duty of the Imperial family to help them lighten their burden. In addition, if he wins, he will have a sum of money. If he receives them and adds his money, he will be able to make a contribution. Arnold asked that he really thought about that too. Elna asked what? What was he doing at this time? Arnold said he was content with the festival. Elna sighed displeasedly and said that if he had at least one of Leo's virtues, then she would feel calmer. Leo caught a jewel thief as a contribution. He is highly praised by the knights of this city. Arnold said that his brother simply knew how to hide his virtue, so that others simply did not see it. They keep it a secret that he helped Leo, and he himself thought that even if this fact was revealed, nothing would change and it would be very problematic if others found out that they could pretend to be each other. Arnold told his brother what was expected of him. Good speech. As a reward, he will give him a bite. Leonardo thanked him. Arnold thought they were helping each other, and Elna, just in case, keeps quiet about it. Leonardo tried what his brother handed him and said that it was surprisingly very tasty. 
Arnold said he has a talent for finding goodies at market stalls. Elna said it was a useless talent for a scion of the imperial family, but it's time for them. Meanwhile, the emperor came on stage with his speech. Elma said that the emperor's speech would begin soon. Taking the stage, the emperor said that their country had suffered few attacks from monsters, due to the fact that they have only now begun to resist them. He asks to forgive such a stupid emperor. Arnold, watching all this from the window of the room, thought that there was very little left before they left. Then he felt that someone came in and thought it was Finn and said that if she was at tea, then he was standing there. But turning around, he saw Christy. This is the third princess. The girl sat down on a chair. And Arnold asked, what happened? Are there any problems? Krista said no, she doesn't have a problem. These people have problems. Arnold leaned over to her and asked what she saw this time. Christy said how this city was surrounded by monsters. Arnold looked very surprised and thought that Krista had innate magic. Usually magic can be learned through training, a rare case when people are naturally proficient in magic. Such isolated cases are very valuable, since their magic is unusually strong. Chris's ability to predict the near future is one of them. In the past, when the crown prince died, she read in front of him that she saw her brother's death with her own eyes. Since then, he ordered her to tell only him about what she saw, so that none of the contenders for the throne could use her. Sometimes she sees the future and desired events, but the ability is still not stable. It is not a fact that her prediction will come true, but something like this cannot be ignored. Arnold asked his sister that she didn't see anyone really die, did she? Krista agreed and said yes. Arnold patted her on the head and said that's it. Well done to her for coming to tell us. Now it will be much easier for him to act. Krista asked if he would go too. Arnold said that he couldn't stay away. Looking at his sister, he thought that if the city really was surrounded by monsters, then it would be much easier to act while on the street. But what should he do with her? At that moment, Finney came into the room and apologized for the intrusion. She asked if they would like some sweets. Arnold thought of something that was needed. He brought the girl to his sister and told her sister to introduce herself. This is his friend Finney. Finney said she was very pleased to meet her. Krista said that she knew it and called it a blue seagull. The most beautiful girl in the empire. Arnold asked Finney if she could spend some time with Krista. Krista wanted to object and said that there was no need. Arnold said she could be trusted. And much more than someone like him. He put his hand into the bag that Finney brought and said that she also had sweets of the highest quality with her. She loves them, doesn't she? Krista took the cookie and took a bite and realized that she really liked it. Arnold laughed and told Finney that he congratulated him because she liked her. Finney asked what was really true. Arnold told his sister that until he or Leo returned, she should stay with her, okay. Krista said okay. Arnold told Finney that he was basically counting on her. Finney said he was counting on her. Finney said okay. She understood. And she asked Krista what about one more. Arnold said it looked like his father was done performing. It's time for him to show his face to the citizens. He extended his hand to his sister and told her not to make that face. Nothing can be done about it because they are members of the imperial family. Krista said that, but he always shirks. Arnold said not this time as she sees it. So they have to go. Then Sandra appeared and said that it was necessary as he really decided to become a nanny. Maybe it's because he got the genius of House Arsberg. Arnold told her that it sounded very rude. It's natural for an older brother to look after his little sister. That's the duty of the elders. Sandra said it was just a laugh, that's all. She sees that he has the courage to dare her. Arnold said she looked like she was very annoyed. What's happened? Did something really not go as she planned? Sandra started to get very angry and told him to be ready. She will explain to him with an example how useless the strong sword he received is if he cannot use it. Then their older brother appeared and grinned and said to Sandra, What is this? How can she explain? The brother turned to Arnold and asked if he really wanted to lend him his sword. It's not too late to do this now. He should just ask his father. Let him cry to him that this is not profitable for him. And I must admit that he is better suited for this. Arnold apologized and said that he did not have such courage. This is the same as criticizing a father's choice, calling it wrong. Still, he is much more afraid of his father. Gordon said that means he will let such talent rot. Oh well, he'll just crush them all. Sandra said those were her words. After that, Arnold took his younger sister away from them. Krista grabbed his hand and said that she was very scared. Arnold said that everything is fine because Finney will be with her. And if anything happens to her, he will come to save her. He promises. Christo asked what was really true. Arnold said yes, pure truth. Then Leonardo came up to them and patted his sister on the head and said what a pity. Krista only relies on their brother, doesn't she? Krista took her brother's hands and said that she was calm now. Arnold asked his brother if he had already decided where he would patrol. 
Leonardo said he would be patrolling in the south. Arnold asked what was in the south, but there, almost no one was harmed by the monsters. Leonardo said that yes, he thinks that no one but him will go there. Of course, the festival and the ambassadorship are very important. But in his opinion, it is much more important to kill monsters so that people in the eastern region can feel safe. Arnold said noble intentions. He was wondering if there was any chance of success at all. Leonardo said there is. Having overheard the reasons for such minor destruction, he began an investigation. Since powerful monsters took over the south, other monsters have stopped approaching him. Arnold said that's it. Someone's target was a large breach. If he beats him, then there are chances that he will win because he was inspecting the surroundings. Leonardo said that, of course, he also went there to express sympathy. However, he is obliged to do what he must do. Arnold said that he doesn't worry now, so let him keep up the good work. Leonardo said that if he doesn't try, he will get hit by Elma. Arnold said that he was already doing well and just needed to work carelessly. After that, all the participants went outside and listened to their father's speech. The emperor said that during the festival, the imperial knights would take an oath of allegiance to his offspring. His children must respect the knights, and the knights must serve them faithfully. Together they will act as one, and they will defeat huge monsters. They are the imperial family, and it is their duty to destroy the enemies of the empire. So let them step in. At this point, the nightly hunting festival is declared open. After that, all participants set off. Brothers and sister Arnold and Leonardo were supported by everyone. Eric was told to try harder. Some said no, because now the advantage is on the side of Prince Gordon. Someone said that Princess Sandra would show them a new type of battle. There were also those who said that they would support Prince Leonardo. After all, this was the first time they had seen such kindness. Elma asked Arnold if he was ready. Arnold took a deep breath and thought it wouldn't be a big deal if someone was up to a secret trick. And he told Elna that, of course, so go ahead. And he himself thought that he would simply ruin his plans. After some time, Elna and Arnold reached one monster. Elna wielded her sword very deftly and had already dealt with all the monsters. Elna said it was the last one. Arnold stood to the side and thought she was a jack of all trades or what. She finished off the AAA group in a few minutes. After that, she contacted the Emperor and said that this was Arnold's squad. They destroyed the bloodhounds in total. They killed 32 of them. Arnold thought that the results of battles were recorded on a magical object every time. In this way, they are quickly delivered to the city and the main camp so that the citizens can see the results for themselves. Judging by the interim report, they are still in first place. According to the rules of the festival, you need to defeat the biggest monster so someone can get ahead. However, now they have an advantage. Arnold told Elna to try not to come forward under the influence of emotions. Then they may be disqualified. Elna said dissatisfied that she knew this. Arnold thought that the scions of the Imperial family had magic bracelets attached to their arms. The captain of the squad also has the same bracelet. If he moves a certain distance, the bracelet will break. Thus, knights cannot move around without permission. Then Elna said that she sees more monsters ahead, so they need to chase them. But Arnold said no, because they were already tired. They needed to rest a little in the nearest city. She may not be tired, but the others are already exhausted. It's only one day now, and the festival lasts three days, so they don't need to rush so much. Elna asked what kind of nonsense he was talking about. They must win. Arnold said that if his memory serves him right, then he is the commander of the detachment. Is she really resisting his orders? Elna understood this and said that she understood, so she would obey the order. Arnold said that's great. When do they leave for the nearest city? In the evening, Arnold was already sitting in the room and just looking out the window at how people were having fun. He said that it is also very noisy here. Then Elna approached him. Elna said that this was the emperor's goal. With this festival he pacified the discontent of the people, and Arnold told her that she needed to knock. Elna asked what is needed. Arnold told her to put herself in his shoes. Elma said she would cut it. Arnold said it didn't make sense. Then he spilled a little of his drink and said what a pity. Elma sighed and said that he really did not look like members of the Imperial family. He shouldn't be upset over such a trifle. Arnold said that although she is a knight, she does not know the true value of such drinks. She doesn't understand anything about this. A noble woman is a noble woman. Elma said that she did not want to hear this from the young gentleman, who had never been further than the capital. Is it even worth getting drunk now? He will suffer from a hangover tomorrow. Then Arnold began to look at her. Elna was confused and asked where he was looking. Arnold said yes, he just thought she never grew up. Ella said that she was just at a later stage of growing up compared to others. She will definitely grow up well. Arnold said that they left that way, it was possible. Even if she tries, she risks only growing fat. 
but then he realized that he had angered her. Arnold shuddered and said that he thought everything was fine as it was. He hopes that there will be someone who will appreciate its flatness. Elma said that she wanted to exercise after dinner. Arnold was so scared that he began to claim that she would. She will definitely grow into a beautiful young lady, so let her calm down. Ella calmed down and said that, after all, he hasn't changed at all. Arnold said she says he hasn't changed in years. I wonder what illusions she had about him. Elma said that it was like an ordinary prince. The most ordinary. At least she wanted him not to be treated like a fool. Arnold asked what was she worried about. He's been treated this way for a long time now. A talentless, effortless, always entertaining slacker who Leo took everything from in the womb. It would be strange if they spoke differently. Elma said that she was upset and offended by this attitude towards him. Arnold thanked her for this, but then Elma hit the table and asked if he even understood. Just because he didn't say anything and doesn't do anything, the aristocrats mock him. Arnold said he thought they had a right to mock him. It's pretty fair of them to tell a worthless person that he's worthless. That's actually good. Elma said that he started talking about it again. At least he himself is not offended. They trample him into the dirt. Unlike childhood, everything is completely different now. Arnold asked what and what. Does she really think that if he wins with her help, then the bad rumors about him will stop? What does she want? What would he do? Elna said she thought he should be serious if Leo had his sights set on the throne. She really believes that he just never did anything seriously. He's always been like this. He shrugs everything off with his wealthy demeanor. After all, the lower his reputation fell, the higher Leo's reputation was. That's why he never tried to do anything worthwhile. Arnold thought what was expected of a childhood friend. She saw through it, but in this case, she should know his answer. So he said that what he has now suits him. And when she finishes this festival, she should no longer approach him. Elna wanted to object to him, but then Arnold said that they were trying to kill him. Elna was horrified and asked what. Arnold, having drunk his drink, said that while he was walking around the castle at night, he was attacked. If Sebastien had not been there, who knows what would have happened to him. He thinks he doesn't need to tell the reason. Elna asked that it was really because of her. Arnold said that, apart from the rivalry for the throne, this festival is very important. The ambassadorial position is at stake. The fact that she is now nearby makes him a contender for victory. Of course, his brothers and sisters don't like this, so they try to get rid of such a subject. Even if he is their brother, nowadays they have no mercy. They are ready to do anything to get the throne, because they know that if they lose, then death awaits them. None of them will give in or show pity. If one of them is Leo or he does not become emperor, then they will simply be killed. He thought that, most likely, his dearest relatives would soon try to eliminate Elma. Not through force, but through politics. He can't let her get caught up in these political squabbles. It would be best to stay away from her, not only out of gratitude, but also for personal reasons. After this, he said that if someone who does not have the ability gets ahead, then similar attacks will resume. Therefore, she should not contact him. Her power is too strong. Elma apologized to him. Arnold told her not to worry. He will do his best at this festival, so she can rest easy. Ella headed towards the exit and said yes. The third day of the hunting festival has arrived. Elna said there are no monsters. But why? If this continues, they will be overtaken. She turned to Arnold and asked that he was really going to stand here and wait. Arnold told her to wait a little, because he would think about everything now. He thought that there was nothing surprising in the fact that they had all disappeared. Any adventurer knows about these habits. The monsters stopped approaching because they felt threatened by Elma. That's why he didn't bother her. This was his plan for all the monsters to move south to Leo. At the moment, Gordon and Leo come after them in the standings. They can also win, but the best option is if Leo wins. That is why he chose a plan to promote him. So far everything is going well, so we can stop. Elma turned to him again. Arnold said he was just wondering that brother Eric and sister Sandra were suspiciously quiet. Elna said that monsters of this rank are not so easy to lure out. She will be very pleased if they find at least three in the east. Arnold said she was right. But then a man ran up to them in his hands. He held a ball and turned to Elna and Arnold. Elna picked up this ball and asked that Prince Carlos is really in first place. The man said that the order of the place suddenly changed. Most likely, he defeated two AAA rank monsters. Elna said that this simply cannot happen. If the captain is not an SS rank adventurer, then this is simply impossible. Under his command is the captain of the 7th division. She will not say that he is weak, but he is not capable of such a thing. Arnold, I thought that everything was clear now. He still couldn't resist and stuck his nose out. Now he is convinced that the one who lured the monsters and controls them is Carlos. However, it is difficult for his stupid little head to implement such a plan alone. 
there is a high probability that someone is using it. So he said that the deadline was running out anyway, so tonight they would do what they could. He thought that he didn't care about the rating. Now it's much more important. He remembered the words of his grandfather and younger sister and, gritting his teeth, thought that if he believed the words of his grandfather and Krista's bad dream, then the worst case scenario awaited them. But at that moment they felt a strong shaking. Ella looked scared and said she didn't believe it. After which she immediately jumped off her horse. Arnold, ask me what happened. Elna fell to the ground and began to listen. She said that an army of monsters was approaching. They rush like an avalanche. This sometimes happens in places full of monsters. The monsters run in a large herd, destroying everything in their path. It's their fault, because they drove them away from here, that's why everyone ran to one place. Arnold thought not. It's too strange that all the monsters are running in one direction. He understands if they were running from Elna, but their top is too close. Most likely, Carlos used the flute that controls the monsters. He asked Elna where they were going. Elna said that if they continue to run like this, she thinks they will reach the keel. Arnold asked if the keel guards could handle it. Elna said she thought not. Even their squad is not enough. What will they not choose, but they will not be stopped. Arnold thought they could buy time for the Emperor to leave, but there was no point in that. People will rebel even more because they caused this tsunami, and the Emperor escaped. There will be a terrible riot. This plan completely ignores the civilian casualties. The one who invented it is the real villain. Arnold asked her that if he ordered her to save the keel, she would listen. And she said of course. After all, protecting the Emperor and the townspeople is their direct responsibility. Arnold said that she doesn't know how many there are and could die. Elna said that she is not afraid of death. Then Arnold turned to all the guards and asked if they agreed with her. Everyone answered in unison that, of course, they will protect everyone, even at the cost of their lives. They will definitely save the keel. Arnold said that he hated all these words. So let them not swear that they will survive. Let them swear on the sword that they will never die. Without an oath, he will not allow anyone to enter into battle. Then Elna came forward and said that she was the Imperial Knight Elna swears by her sword. She vows that she will definitely survive. Arnold said great. Elna is pleased. I rose to my feet and asked that then they could go. Since there are so many monsters, they will be able to regain leadership. But then Arnold took off the bracelet. He said that he played with it too much and accidentally took it off. Nothing can be done about it, now disqualification. Once that's all, he'll go to the nearest town and drink sake. Elna asked what why. He had a chance to win back. Arnold said that if he went with them, he would only be a hindrance. She shouldn't worry so much, because he voluntarily decided to remove himself from the competition. Let her tell her father this, that he broke his bracelet. So he orders all the knights. They must protect the emperor and the inhabitants of Kiel. It's okay if, in the worst case scenario, they lose the city. Only people's lives matter. Elna said that she would obey his highness's decision. Arnold said that Krista and Finney were still in the Kiel. They will probably get scared, so someone needs to calm them down. Elma said okay, then she will leave a few nights with them. Then Sebasti appeared and said that he would take care of his safety himself, so she doesn't have to worry about that. Therefore, I must leave everything to him. Still, he was worried about his highness. Elma said that it was as good as it was then. Arnold said he relies on them. No one but them can cope with this. After this, Elma gathered her strength and said that the Imperial Knight, Elna Armsburg, would definitely carry out the will of his highness. By putting this sword on the line, she swears that she will defeat all enemies and save the keel. After that, all the knights rushed off. Arnold and Sebastian are left here alone. Arnold told Sebastian to get ready. He took out his mask and said that from now on it was time for the dark horse to come out. By that time, the monsters had already attacked the keel. All the knights defended themselves as best they could. Then one little girl was attacked by a monster. But the Emperor stood up for her and told her to hide inside any building. The girl said it was good. One of the knights ran up to the Emperor and told him to leave quickly. The monsters keep coming and coming. The Emperor said that he would not run away, so they must hold the line. He will no longer allow his people to be harmed. They must protect them even at the cost of their lives. Then someone screamed. The Emperor turned around and saw two guys. One of them told him to look at him, because the Emperor now looks so pitiful. Guy too said that he was right, it was a very pleasant sight. The Emperor asked, who are they? One of the guys said his name is Sam. A two said his name was Dean. The Emperor examined them carefully and thought that these were fangs. This means they are vampires. The Emperor said that, judging by the stories of yesteryear, they were vampires who were severely persecuted by the clan, and whose heads were placed on bounties by the Adventurers Guild. 
If he remembers correctly, their names were the same as theirs. Together they were considered an S-class monster. So it was them, wasn't it? Sam said exactly what? It's them. Dean said that the guild treated them like low-grade monsters. Such an insult is inexcusable. They have not forgotten this humiliation, as well as hatred for those who insulted them. The Emperor said what a long memory they have. Those people have been dead for a long time, and that's why they decided to take revenge on him, didn't they? One of the brothers said that they refused such pettiness. Still, their life expectancy is much higher than that of them humans, so they decided to take revenge. Dean said that they decided to take revenge on the entire empire, on whose land their descendants live. Sam said his ranting would soon come to an end. He will drink it dry and throw his withered corpse in the center of their dear capital. The Emperor thought that this meant that they had lured the monsters, if only his knights were with him, so he told these vampires that they should try it if they could. Even after his death the Empire will not go away. Dean said that he commends him for being so brave, but his bravado won't change the fact that the difference in their strengths is colossal. He must die in agony and regret for having made them his enemies. But then Elna came to the Emperor's aid. She blocked the blow of this vampire. Dean asked what this other obstacle was. The Emperor told Elna that she was good for coming to help, and she asked that she really no longer needed to protect herself from Arnold. Elna said that she was unable to carry out his orders to fight as one, so she asks you to forgive her. The Emperor said that it was nice to know that his son had grown up to be a wonderful man, and it was all thanks to her. Elna wanted to tell him something, but the Emperor interrupted her and said that Arnold had sent her here, and she, responding to his desire, managed to arrive on time. This makes him happy. By the way, maybe she will show him how skilled a knight she has become. Elna prepared for battle and said that everything would be done. She will show him the full power of the Arnsberg sword. Sam grinned and said that there was only one more of them, and he knew who she was. She is the knight who was introduced to that useless scum. It was because of his uselessness that they were unable to advance further in the standings. His brother's plan plunged his face into the dirt. Dean told his brother not to let his guard down. He shouldn't take her for an ordinary person. Sam said that even though she was gifted, she was still an ordinary person. At this point Elna became so angry that, standing up, she said to the heir that they didn't have the guts to say to her face the words that she hated most. So let them prepare for immediate death. Sam said she was just a pathetic little human. She shouldn't underestimate him. After which they entered into battle. Sam realized that Elna was not so simple and thought that she was very fast. This is really hard. Dean said what was expected of a knight of House Arsberg. No wonder she is compared to the legendary hero. However, he will make her regret that she stood in their way, after which he attacked her with his magic. But Elna dodged. The Emperor thought that the pressure of the monsters had weakened a little, didn't he? However, the same enemy with Elna's detachment still surpasses them. Then someone called out to him. It was Carlos. He told his father that he came after defeating many monsters. One of the knights told Carlos that he should move away, because it is dangerous here. Carlos said that it's okay, because now he will become a hero. The emperor looked at his son in surprise and said that reinforcements were coming. Carlos turned to the vampires, and calling them nasty, said that they should go away now. And he himself thought yes. As soon as he arrives, they must retreat, because that was the agreement. By protecting this city, he will become. But then one of the vampires attacked him. It was Sam who said that he really came. This prince is not very smart either. Dean told his brother not to be distracted by the small fry, but to keep an eye on the enemy in front of him. Elna said how dare they. Meanwhile, Leonardo's squad rushed as fast as they could to help. Leonardo told them to keep the pace down. They must gallop to the keel as soon as possible. But then Silver appeared in front of her. Leonardo stopped and asked that he was Silver, right? Silver bowed his head and said that in person. And he is very glad to meet him. Leonardo said he didn't have time to rant here. Is this appropriate now? Silver said yes it is possible. However, he should stop on his journey. Leonardo asked what is he talking about? Silver said that we will say so many who are on their way, whom they would rather not meet. Leonardo said that until he knows for sure, he will not stop. Maybe he can save at least someone's life. Silver said that if they continue to go and save people, they will have a lot of problems. Are the knights who surround him really playing for him? It seems that this needs to be found out before something terrible happens. Leonardo asked how many troops were there. He can't stop, is he sure of that? He has people who protect his father and sister, right? If something happens to him, he will not be able to forgive himself. Silver said he didn't remember saying that. He said it takes time to prepare the forces. The knights in the east should have already surrounded them. Leonardo asked that the Lord's knights surrounded them or what? One of the knights said what nonsense this is. No matter how powerful the prince is, he is clearly overrated. 
It would take them a few days to prepare the knights and report the situation. Silver said he should leave it to him. The only question is what the prince's intentions are. Still, they can make a mistake. Do they have such an opportunity? How serious are their intentions to save their family? Leonardo said that he was not interested in the status of the royal family. He doesn't mind being a simple knight, so let him explain it to them. Silver said you need to be determined. The solution is simple. He uses magic to open the gate, they just have to go through this gate. They must warn the knights at the gate about the current situation. The knight said that he could not promise anything and that anything could happen to the prince. This cannot be done alone. Arnold thought it was a high stake. There are few knights, and this is alarming and simply wastes magical powers. If everything goes well and Leo wins, then the situation will be resolved quite quickly. And he asked Leonardo if he was sure. Leonardo said yes, he is sure. He will do it, maybe the older brother will decide to try too. Silver said he doesn't think so. Leonardo said he didn't know. Brother shows special determination in such situations. He still believes that he makes a decision. I am faster than anyone else. Arnold smiled and said that they would see then. After which he opened the gate. And then he himself and Leonardo's entire army passed. Passing through this gate, Leonardo said that this is the magic of transference. Silver said yes, and he moved them here. This area also now has the ability to be transported using magic. Everything is already activated. After this, Leonardo sighed and told all the knights from the east that he heard their voices. They should listen. He is Prince Leonard, the eighth prince. Currently, the tragedy occurred in the eastern part, and now this city has become a transition point. It is in danger. They need troops to go there. If they hear him, then let them come through the nearest magical teleporter. There is no need to ask permission. I am the master. He takes responsibility for them. They must protect all residents, those who bravely followed him. He believes in them, after which everyone froze in anticipation. Arnold thought it was no use after all, but then one of the knights finally came to them. Having passed through this teleport, he said that it was magical, he passed through. Seeing Leonardo in front of him, he got off his horse and said that he was a knight of Hesse. His name is Hans, and he wants to join him. Leonardo also got off his horse and thanked him for coming. He said that he would need to thank him somehow. Hans said it was a small house. That's all he needs. He had dreamed of fighting under him ever since he heard that his highness was saving villages all over the world. He is not the only knight who dreams of this. After that, another army came. The knight who was in charge said that his name was Volker. I am Lord of Ulm, who will join his highness with 500 knights. Leonardo thanked him for joining him, and she asked if everything was okay. Walker said he has strength and courage, and he asked if he was really dissatisfied with something. Leonardo said that everything was fine and thank him for joining them. Silver laughed and said that he shouldn't let him demonstrate his martial arts. And Arnold himself thought that the number of people was increasing and soon there would be about 3,000. The soldiers who came to participate of their own free will were a terribly expensive spectacle. I wonder if this will become a problem. Leonardo approached Silver and thanked him for his cooperation. Silver said he was simply taking the initiative and let them talk after saving the keel. Leonardo said yes. Silver said great, then he will leave one. After that Silver disappeared. Lord's Mansion. A large crowd of people approached the mansion. They begged them to open the gate and let them in. The knight who stood at the gate told them to return to their places. Didn't they hear his majesty's orders? The man continued to beg and asked them to open the gate. Then Finney came and told the knight to stop all this. They must let the people out. The knight bowed to her and said that as she commanded. Finney approached the residents and, smiling, said that everything was in order, now they could go. They can call her Princess Seagull. The residents were very surprised and said that this was the same princess whom the emperor loved like a daughter. Then Guido found himself in the crowd. Finney immediately remembered him, and turning away from him, she said that children and old people should be escorted to the mansion. They should also pay special attention to the sick. There should be as many people as possible, so they should open the gate. Someone said that soon a lot of monsters will come here. Human life is not a priority. If monsters invade the city, it will be bad. Don't distract him for a while, then they will open the gate. Guido again tried to attract Finney's attention and said that it was him. Had she really forgotten him? Finney said no, she remembers. Guido said that sometimes why can't she miss him? In the film, she looked at him displeasedly and said that he should know shame. He is trying to get to a safe place. He also tried to start a fight with His Majesty the Emperor, and now. Doesn't it seem to him that the Honorable Duke Colvac cannot be missed with his predecessors? Guido was horrified and asked who she was. Who is she now? Finney said that it doesn't matter, because it's Her Imperial Majesty's decision. 
If he has nowhere to spend his time, then he can later turn to his majesty the emperor and tell all his indignations. But she thinks it is better to look at the fire in which he will be punished. Guido got very angry and said that she should worry, because Prince Leonardo is behind her. She must remember, because he will never forgive her. After that, the gate was opened and Finney said that they could come in. The grandmother passed by the girl and thanked her. Fine said it was okay, she shouldn't worry. After that, she went to the mansion and began to lead there. She said that they should take furniture and use it to strengthen the entrance as much as possible. When the monster comes, they need to delay it as much as possible. If they are having a hard time and are tired, then they can take a break. Then a maid came to Fina and said that her highness was calling her. Finney quickly climbed the stairs and came to Krista. She came into the room and said that she had to find out the details. Krista cried and said that a lot of monsters would come. Finney said it was okay. Krista said she lost the scroll. Finney asked what would she tell her. Hi Krista said no because she is dead. Finney said that everything was fine, she was happy. In addition, they will help her if she is in danger. Krista asked what was in danger. Finney asked her to tell her the whole truth. Does she know the details? Krista said the clock tower. She saw the fall. She lost her scroll. After that, Finney ran on. She thought it was clear. Then they will do so. He seriously told the history of the city and about the monsters. And that's what happened. She is sure that there is some special reason for the scroll. She can't fight the same way. Maybe at least this will help. Meanwhile, El continued to fight. Sam attacked Elna and told her not to bother his brother. Dean took the flute and thought that if he summoned more monsters, then... Elma saw this and shouted that they should stop him. After that, she flew up to him and knocked the flute out of his hands. Dean rushed for the flute and said it was unpleasant. He thought that he promised. He promised to definitely get rid of this damn scroll. If he can't, then he won't live. And then the Finny caught this flute. Dean said that she should give it to him and then shot magic at her. Elma shouted at the Finny to run away. Then Finny threw this flute to Elmi. And Elna caught her. But in return, Finny had to sacrifice herself, and now she was falling to the bottom. Fine thought that this was already the end, but Silver came to her aid and caught her. Dean asked Silver what kind of person you need to be to resist his magic bullets. He must give it away. Silver said that a member of His Majesty the Emperor's Adventurer's Guild, an SS class adventurer, and he came to kill him. Dean said that. And he looks, they like to look for adventures. Elna was very happy to see him and said that it was not bad. Dean immediately tried to rush towards them, but Elna stopped him and said that she would not let him pass. Feeney wanted to say something to Silver, but she couldn't, and then Silver told her not to go crazy. Finney said she was sick, so unusual, but that Silver patted her on the head and said that it was good. He will go down lower for her. After they descended to the ground Silver said that they returned to the Lord's Rest. Feeney wished him luck. Silver told her to keep it for herself. After that, Silver joined Elma. Dean said that damn, how troublesome they are. Sam shouted at them to disrupt his brother's plan. Dean said he didn't think an SS class adventurer would show up. He is very surprised. Silver said he was surprised too. They must have been waiting for him ever since. Weren't they afraid of the arrival of such an adventurer? Dean shouted at him not to be a fool. He must not interfere with their plan. Elna said, well, well. Their fight was interrupted by a monster, and he came. Let them think that their chance has already been missed. Dean chuckled and asked, do they really feel like they've already lost? The scroll was stolen. How about this? There are even more monsters. They will lose, and they will leave victorious. Silver said he wasn't going to deal with them at the same time. Elma said it was interesting. Finally there is someone to fight with. Sam shouted that they didn't belong here, and they should leave before she shows them the seriousness of her intentions. Elna said let her show her. She will destroy everyone. Silver said he was thrilled with her. But still, he can handle himself here, so she can go. Elna got angry and asked what she had not heard. Did he really want to steal her loot? Silver said she seemed to have a hearing problem. She's the Emperor's Knight, so she has to go, and he will kill the opponents. Elna said she wanted to fight, and let him go, because she was the one who fought with them. Silver asked if she didn't think the Emperor was defenseless right now. Elna said that His Majesty ordered her not to retreat. And they also said words that she hates. So she definitely decided not to back down. Did he really want to get in her way so that she would kill him too? Arnold thought how scary it was. Dean laughed and said he could afford it. Hero and adventurer of SS class. How good. The situation is like this. They know that they are equal, don't they? Silver asked that they were equal. Dean asked if they really didn't understand. 
The Emperor will be killed soon, won't he? Why don't the two of them go help him? Adventurers belong to the Emperor, and the Emperor is more important, isn't it? Silver said that it belongs to a guild that is not run by the Emperor. The Adventurer's task is to protect the people on the continent, not the Emperor. To be honest, the Emperor is dying, but he doesn't care. He protects the residents of the city, only they are privileged classes. He protects the people of the country, not the rulers. There are people in this country who have been promised protection. This is mainly done by knights. They have no values in their existence, so he wasn't going to take their job. Dean asked what the job was. Meanwhile, Leonardo and his army were rushing to help. The knights were shouted that they should follow the 8th Prince Leonardo, because this is an order. Leonardo said they had to defend the city. Dean asked, what is the army really? Sam couldn't stand it and told them not to bother her. Elna got in her way and told her they had to do it. She turned to Silver and said she would give him something would he take it. Silver said it wasn't a bad offer. He'll take it. Dean shouted that it was good. They'll try. Feeney watched Arnold struggle. Dean was clearly losing to Silver. And he knew it. He told Silver that damn him. Arnold thought that meant he wanted to try melee combat. But while Arnold was concentrating one, got close to him and hit him. He swung and said it was slow. Then he hit Arnold, so that he fell. Dean asked, what is it? Is he really so weak that he can't even scratch him? Elna asked what he was doing. Apparently, he's not as strong as he claimed. Dean said that or else he was just holding back. Does he think that makes him cool? It looks very shabby. Arnold thought that not only was the enemy looking down on him from above, but his ally was also throwing mud at him. Seriously, being an adventurer is so hard. For the sake of his dear brother and the knights who got involved because of him and for the sake of the people of this city, he will bear it all. Dean said that he was a pigeon, because he was afraid and hid from the likes of him. After all, he's only human. Arnold thought that, but everything has a limit. He got to his feet and said that he really was hiding. Even vampires can sink to the bottom. Dean, apparently, tried to attack him again. But it didn't work out, he thought it wasn't working. Then the knights and the villagers who were wounded noticed that their wounds began to heal. One of the faceted ones asked if it was really delayed too early. Silver said that's how it always is. He's busy, and they beat him up as they want. Dean called him a bastard and said that he just shouldn't say that during their fight he was erecting a healing barrier. Silver said he was almost right. The other barrier has just been completed. Dean looked around and asked if magic circles were installed all over the city. After that, Dean and Sam were chained up. They tried to get out, but they didn't succeed. Sam told him to let her go immediately. Silver said they couldn't get out and asked if they were ready. The time has come for their punishment. Silver said that ancient magic is in bondage. Anyone who finds themselves in these steps will be weakened by the curse. The power of vampires comes from their vast reserves of magic. As for their physical strength, are they not that different from humans? In other words, if he just sealed their magic, then they would have nothing to fear. Then Elna turned to him and said that his chains. Why are they chasing her? Arnold thought that. Well, she ruined the whole moment and he told her that it looked like they were taking captive anyone who was hostile towards him. Elna asked that why did he want to imprison his ally in chains. Silver said that the chains would not react to those who consider him an associate. She was just being too aggressive towards him. Moreover, she shouldn't have any problems with the chains imposed by him, should she? Elna said he's been holding a grudge against her since the last time. She was actually really worried when this guy hit him. Silver said she was worried, so people around should be busy with their work and he thought it was so much fun. Elna blushed and asked, what's what? After that, Silver turned to the vampires again and said that his apologies, he had to be distracted, and also asked, where did they stop there? But then he remembered and said that you shouldn't be afraid of a vampire whose magic was sealed. He's right, isn't he? Sam yelled at him not to look down on them. He has to let them go. When she gets out, he's finished, she'll tear him to pieces. Silver said that if they think they can get free, then let them try, they won't succeed, even if they spend their whole lives on it. And now it's time to repent. Do they have something to say in the end? Then Dean asked that he wasn't mad at them, right? If he lets them go, they will be in his debt. Silver said whether he's angry, he thinks that's putting it mildly. Dean asked what they had done to him. He didn't come here at the guild's request, did he? If he wants to kill them, it must be by order of the guild. Silver said that humans are very complex creatures. They don't understand where resentments come from. Moreover, he is still an adventurer. It is his duty to protect the inhabitants of this continent from monsters. It doesn't matter if an order was given to destroy them. 
Dean said that, but they're not monsters. Silver said that the guild defines them as monsters. In addition, their actions are no different from the behavior of monsters, and asked if they would say anything else. If they tell the identity of the person who ordered them to do this, then he may be able to stop this hero. Does he understand what he is talking about? Sam looked at her brother. Arnold thought that he did not believe that these two could be loyal to anyone. They're probably just scared. It means that this is some kind of genius that even S-rank bounty hunters are afraid of. But who is it? Elna told these vampires to spill everything, and quickly. Otherwise, she will kill them. Sam said they were proud vampires. Let her not even think that they will obey some little people. Elma said that's how it is. Well, then it's time to end it. She had finished her preparations. Silver asked if she just didn't say she was going to summon the sacred sword. Elma asked what, and what if it is? Silver said his magic was enough. Or does she want to destroy the whole city? Elma said she would adjust the power so that while he was holding back the enemies, she could gently summon him. She is a representative of the House of Armsburg and it is her duty to destroy the enemies of the Empire. She would never forgive them. After which, she began to summon her sword. She raised her hand up and said that let him hear her voice and come down, Shining Star Sword. Now the hero needs him. Silver thought that 500 years ago, the sword that the hero used to defeat the Demon King was Aurora. Elna took this sword in her hands and said that now they should get ready. Dean said it was light. Arnold thought it was a ridiculous feeling of suppression. It is said that this sword was forged because of a meteorite, and it can cut through everything in creation and does not allow any evil. Because of his great strength, he was sealed by the first generation of the House of Heroes of Armsburg. Only those who are qualified enough to be a hero can summon him. Elna was only able to summon him at the age of 12. After that, he said that so be it, he allows her to deal with them. Elna said that first of all it is her prey. He should have asked her for permission. Silver said that. Well, they need to stop there. After that, he began to invoke his magic and said that he was a usurper. Usurpation is darker than the depths of the underworld. Darkness is darker than the abyss. The darkness is deeper than the night. The darkness of creation. The darkness of death she must bring back all those born from the darkness from where they came. Endless darkness. And he said that he would bury these monsters in one grave. He shouted to the residents that everyone who remained in the epicenter of the battle should get out of there. Elna also shouted that she could not guarantee that she would not touch them. The Emperor ordered that they should retreat to the castle wall. Right now, Leonardo shouted that they should put off attacking the monsters. Silver said that, and now they have to grit their teeth. Elna said it was payback time. The vampires were very scared, and after using force, all the monsters disappeared. Leonardo said they wiped the monsters off the face of the earth. After that, Elna and Silver went down to earth to the Emperor. Arnold looked at his father and thought, did they really overdo it? Well, it's alright, because I'll only scold Elna. After which, he told the Emperor that this time he participated in it only as a private person, but he hoped that he would refrain from neglecting the guilds. The Emperor smiled and said that's how it is. Then he thanks him for his cooperation. Arnold thought that the guild would be able to maintain its reputation. They also shouldn't pursue the Empire, therefore. He bowed to the Emperor and said that in that case he begged his forgiveness. He was about to leave, but then Ella stopped him. He asked, what is it? Are there any complaints? Elna said that, yes, and that's enough. But he won't talk about them now. He saved them today. And special thanks for saving Fine. This girl, she is very dear to his childhood friend. Silver asked the childhood friend. Is it really about a mediocre prince? Elna drew her sword and said that did he really keep calling him that even after he saw what she did to the vampire who insulted him. Her childhood friend is the best prince. She won't forgive anyone for bullying him. Arnold smiled and thought that it seemed that she was really ready to fight with an SS class adventurer in order to protect his name. After which he said that if she was so worried about it, then he really shouldn't have called him a mediocre prince, so he apologizes. However, this is quite sad. It must be hard to have a childhood friend like her. Well, here he will have to deviate. Elna wanted to tell him something else, but it was too late because Silver had disappeared. Arnold reappeared at the hotel. The two men were in the stable now. One of them said that this horse has a very good coat. Another man said that it seemed to be the horse of the Imperial family. The man asked if someone from the Imperial family was staying at this hotel. Sebastian bowed to Arnold and said that he thanked him for his work. And he also made him tea already. Arnold thanked him and apologized for it. He sat down on the sofa. Sebastian brought him a cup of tea and said he looked very tired. Arnold said he spent too much magic. Sebastian said that he should leave everything else to him. Arnold thought he was sleepy, as expected, he was exhausted. Sebastian said he thanked him from the bottom of his heart for his hard work. 
It was great. Three days after the incident, Arnold was riding in a carriage. Sebastian, who was driving this carriage, told Arnold that the meeting would begin as soon as they arrived at the place. Arnold said that means everyone is waiting for one of him. Sebastian said he was afraid he would be laughed at again. Arnold said that, well, let it be. As soon as Arnold arrived, Krista immediately ran up to him. Arnold asked her how she was. Krista said it was so scary. Arnold asked what was really true, but he's glad she's safe. Leonardo and Elna also came out to him. Elna said welcome home. Arnold said yes, he was back, and he himself thought that it seemed that no one was injured. Arnold approached his brother and said that he had no questions for Elna, but he managed to do everything in time, didn't he? Leonardo said that Silver had helped him. Arnold said he had researched what to expect from an adventurer of this class. He's pretty capable, isn't he? Elna asked what part of this man seemed human to him at all. Arnold said that didn't he save the emperor. Elna said it was an accident, she's sure of it. Arnold said that even if he was just lucky, it doesn't change anything. He saved him anyway. And I asked my sister that he was right, wasn't he? Krista said yes. Elna said it wasn't fair to lure her highness Krista to her side. Arnold also saw Feeny, who smiled at him. Arnold thought they could talk later. That's what she meant, isn't it? Yes, Eric came out to him and said that he was late. And what did he do? When she saw her older brother, Krista, she immediately cowered and hid behind Arnold. Arnold smiled and said that it was Eric himself. He apologizes for being late. Eric said he didn't care about his apologies, he was sure he wasn't even sorry. Arnold asked why. It's a pity to some extent. Eric said it was possible that he had made himself clear enough. He doesn't feel sorry for them at all, does he? In other things, he was always like that. Arnold said that. Well, he thinks he didn't bother anyone with it. Eric adjusted his glasses and said that he was a very interesting person. He did the right thing by letting Elna go ahead. He must continue to make the right decisions in the future. If he is of any value to him as Leonard, then he will not do anything bad to him. Arnold said it sounded like he was already an emperor. Eric said he was the future emperor. Of course, no matter how hard he, Gordon or Sandra tried, they couldn't change that. They should remember that. He shouldn't be too presumptuous. Leonardo frowned and told Eric that he would keep that in mind. Arnold thought that this had just been a declaration of war, meaning that they could no longer ignore the most influential pre-president in place of the emperor. However, it was just a warning. Krista turned to Arnold. Arnold patted her on the head and said that everything was fine. He won't do anything to her, they'll be fine. Leonardo said they had to go, because their father was already waiting for them. But then Arnold told him to listen to him. After that, they entered the hall to the emperor. The emperor sat on the throne and said that they all did a great job this time. He gathered here only those who need to know this information. What he's about to say is completely confidential. Last night, Carlos, who was seriously injured, regained consciousness. After examining the evidence that had been gathered over the past few days, he came to the conclusion that he was connected to those two vampires. Carlos hunted monsters that were lured by the flute of these two and took first place. Moreover, he cooperated with them in the attack on Kiel on the condition that they would retreat as soon as he arrived and in return he would refuse their rewards. He slammed his fist on the table and said what a stupid thing. Eddick said that in other words, from the very beginning it was Carl's plan to lure out this monster, wasn't it? The Emperor said that everything was right. Ultimately, these vampires took advantage of him, but there's no denying that he did it all for his own benefit. By his actions, he put him and, of course, the Empire at risk. He cannot forgive this betrayal. Eric bent his knee in front of him and said that he asked not to be too strict in his punishment. No matter how stupid he was, he was still his brother. Arnold thought it was all a blatant lie, of course, they are not asking for Carlos from the heart. They just know that this is what the Emperor wants. How did you expect his father to investigate? He doesn't want to kill Carl's, who was bedridden for the rest of his life. The reason why the Emperor gathered them here and openly showed his anger is because he cannot forgive him himself. He wants Erica and the others to help him forgive Carlos, otherwise he will not be able to maintain his dignity as an emperor. After that, the emperor turned to Leonardo and said that he could say that this was his first achievement. What can he say about this? Leonard said he believed his majesty should not forgive him. On the contrary, Carlos should be executed. Everyone looked at Leonardo in surprise. The emperor asked why did he say that? He's his brother. Leonard said that he is not only his brother, but also a traitor to the Empire in the first place. If he forgives him, it will entail an undesirable precedent. How would he explain this to the knights who had shed blood to protect them? The Emperor said that neither the people nor the knights know about what happened. This will all remain strictly between them. Leonard said it wasn't acceptable anyway. His majesty must be fair. Even if he is his son, he should judge him for the sin he committed. 
and to present the rebel's head to the people so that everyone knows that the emperor is truly just. This will give them confidence and peace of mind. Before they entered the hall to his father, Arnold stopped Leonardo and told him his plan. After that, he asked if he understood him. Leonardo asked if he was sure that everything would be fine. Arnold said yes, but only he can put forward this assumption. It will benefit everyone. Now Arnold thought that if he saved Carlos, it wouldn't mean that he was neglecting Leo. That's why even though Leo shares third place with Gordon, everything will turn out that he will be the ambassador, all for the sake of the development so desired by the father. The emperor asked if he had decided so himself. Leonardo asked what he was talking about. The emperor said that well, good. He respects the opinion of Eric and the others, and therefore will spare Carlos. He turned to Leonardo and said that, however, his achievements could no longer be ignored. He called him over and told him that he had to accept it as he had not prepared for it in advance. He declares him the winner of this festival. Carlos was disqualified, as was Arnold, who took second place. They in the city took the third place, but Leonard led the knights to save the keel. Thanks to this, he gained popularity in the east. Therefore, Leonard must become the winner in order to ease the discontent of the people. Gordon understands that, doesn't he? Gordon could barely contain his anger and said that he was completely at his disposal. But then Elna turned to the Emperor and said that he should let her make a statement. The Emperor looked at her and asked, what is it? Elna asked him to cancel the disqualification of His Highness Arnold. He did this in order to send them, the knights, to Kiel. Her act is worthy of praise. He does not deserve the stigma of disqualification. All the knights who came here with Elna also began to beg the Emperor. The Emperor turned to Arnold and asked that he had broken his bracelet by mistake, right? Arnold said yes, it was an accident. The Emperor said that it means that the disqualification cannot be cancelled. It would be another matter if he deliberately broke it and deliberately sent Elna to him. But rules are rules. The winner should be Leonard. Arnold said that even if he had said that he had sent Elna here on purpose, no one would have accepted his victory. So he is also happy with the place of the stupid prince who accidentally broke his bracelet. But then the Emperor said that, however, it was true that thanks to Elna he was saved. In other words, Arnold's mistake saved him. For this he is entitled to a reward. So he appoints Arnold as deputy ambassador. He must go with Leonard and help him. Arnold was clearly not ready for this. He said he didn't think he had the right skills. The Emperor said he could provide everything to Leonardo. He has to find at least a job that he can handle and prove to him that he can do it. Arnold thought it was really unexpected. After that, the Emperor said that the conversation was over. Tomorrow he will make an official statement, and now they can all rest. Elna told Arnold that it was wonderful. Arnold told her not to contact him anymore. Elna asked why. Arnold thought he understood everything else. Ella is not to blame for anything. The reason why her father behaved like this probably lies in his carefree behavior. It's entirely his fault. After that, he was already sitting in his room and thought that his plan had failed. Surely their faction will be destroyed while they are on the left in another country. He doesn't even know what to do with it. Then Feeney came up to him and brought tea. Arnold said it didn't look like regular tea. He sniffed it and said it was bitter and had an aroma similar to the tea his mother liked to drink. He is sure that she made it according to a different recipe. She used oriental tea leaves, didn't she? Finney sat down next to him and said that her mom taught her that too. These tea leaves were given to her from home. Arnold, he looks so tired now, this tea will help him get back to normal. Arnold said there was no need to worry so much about him. Finney said it was fine, but let him drink the tea to the end. Arnold thanked her for everything, but the girl said no because she should thank him. Thank him for his help. She gives him nothing but problems. Arnold said that this was not the case at all, because if not for her heroic act, the tsunami would have caused much more damage. It wasn't a wasted sacrifice. She just shouldn't risk herself unnecessarily. He thought that at that moment his heart would stop. Finney said she thought she was going to die too, but she was so happy Arnold came. Arnold blushed very much, after which he drank her tea and said that it was still possible one. Finney poured him more and told him to drink slowly. Arnold said it was his fault. Finney looked at him and thought that Arnold had not changed since their first meeting, the day when she began to be called Princess Seagull. She was so worried about meeting the Emperor in front of so many people, but he was able to cheer her up with a conversation. From that moment on, her heart belongs to him. When he came to their house, did she not say that it was nice to meet him? It seemed to her that Arnold had changed when she saw him in anger, but he's still the same as that day. That's why she asked her father to help him. Maybe she's bothering him, but still. Then she looked at him and realized that he had fallen asleep. She covered him with a blanket and said that he might not remember her, but, well, after that she blushed so much that, clutching her cheeks, she said that her face was burning. 
she needs to drink some water. After that, she sat down next to him and said that he should let her stay next to him. Meanwhile, Sandra was sitting in her room. A man came to her and said that she had received a letter from Madame. The time is coming. Sandra said yes. Of course, it's a shame that they missed the opportunity to become an ambassador plenipotentiary. But nothing. She does not need the help of other states. What really matters is what kind of power she has in the imperial capital. As long as these two work hard to establish connections in other countries, then she will retain power in the empire with her own hands. The man said that he had finally come to chew them. Sandra laughed and said yes. After so many years, they finally have someone in the position of minister. They managed to do it even despite the fact that all ministerial positions were monopolized by Eric. She asked this man, by the way, what about those who were sent to Arnold? The man said that no one had returned. It looks like the butler got rid of them. Sandra said she underestimated him. Next time, everything should go perfectly. This butler is the only one who poses a threat in the twins' tandem. A legendary assassin once known as the God of Death. She can't understand why he became the butler of a mediocre prince. Talent buried in the ground. It is also associated with the Armsburg house. I wonder why such treasures end up in the hands of those who cannot realize their value. The man said that soon everything will belong to her. Sandra jumped up and said that yes it is. She will make sure that the throne is in her hands. And then she can do whatever she wants. All her hated rivals will finally be executed. She can't wait for this moment. The Imperial Sword Palace. The Inner Palace. Leonardo and Arnold arrived there. They went to their mom's house and Leonard said that he and Arnold had come to visit her. Their mom said welcome. She just baked some sweets, so let them help themselves. They sat down at the table, and mom asked that they hadn't seen each other for so long, hadn't they? Arnold said yes, so much time has passed. Mom said it was because he was playing too much and completely forgot about his mother, didn't she? Or did he finally have a girlfriend? Arnold thought his mom's name was Mitsubishi. She is a dancer from the east and is known for the fact that her father fell in love with her at first sight and proposed to her at the same second. Arnold said that one. Mitsubishi said that he was boring. He could have shared love stories with his mother since he finally came to visit her. So, why did they come together? Leonard told his mother that he had been appointed ambassador and his brother was assigned to accompany him as an assistant. They would probably have to leave the empire soon, so they wanted to let her know in advance. Mitsuba was very happy and said that was it really true. So that's what's the matter. Then can they bring something delicious as a souvenir? If they buy her some jewelry, then she will be very uncomfortable. Arnold thought that despite her character, she was very well settled in the inner palace. But this is provided that a power struggle is also in full swing here. Leonardo asked his mother, what, is she really not worried at all? Mitsuba asked that she really should. He's still the same kid. She's not going to teach her 18-year-old sons what they need to do and what they shouldn't do. Well, if his majesty has entrusted them with the job, then she thinks that he has definitely decided for himself that they are capable of it. Leonardo said that's how it is. Then he will carry out his duties with confidence. Arnold said that he was the end and gave him a job, so he would also make every possible effort. Did Mitsubishi say they can work at their own pace? They won't be killed for failure, after all. Then Krista came into the room. She immediately ran up to her mother. Mitsuba patted her on the head and said that she could treat herself to sweets. Arnold and Leo don't eat much anyway. Krista sat on her mother's lap and asked what was really true. Arnold said yes, let her help herself. She can at least eat it all. And he himself thought that Krista's mother died when she was still a baby. His mother volunteered to take custody of Krista. From that moment on, Krista treated her mother as if she were her real mother. Looking at them, they remembered their childhood days. Mitsuba said that, by the way, Elna visited her recently. She was apologizing for Arnold, but what exactly did he do? Arnold said that she did what she shouldn't have done, and because of that he was in an unpleasant position. Krista said that her brother is the only one who brings problems, and it's true. Then Mitsubishi remembered something else and said that for sure. She wanted to ask something else. Which of the two of them will take Miss Fine as his wife? Both brothers choked. Leonard said that Annis and Miss Fine have a slightly different relationship. Mitsuba said that, but it's unusual for both of them to have a girl in their life. She's right, isn't she? So you're still close to Leo, right? Arnold said that people say that they look good together with her. Leonardo blushed and looked displeased at his brother. Krista told her mom that did she know that Fine was Arnold's brother's girlfriend. Mitsuba asked, is it really true? Krista said yes, Fine is so beautiful, and she really looks good with her brother Arnold. Mitsubishi looked at her son and grinned. Arnold said they were just with her a little longer because of a case that involved Duke Clainert. There is nothing between them. Mitsubishi asked what, but he knows that she is the one beauty in the empire, right? 
She looked at Krista and asked, isn't that right? Krista looked at her mom and said no. Mother is much more beautiful. Mitsuba hugged her daughter and said thank you to her. She also thinks she is the most beautiful. Then Arnold got up. Leonardo asked if he was really leaving already. Arnold said yes because he had to meet someone else. But he can stay here a little longer. Krista told Arnold that they would see each other later. Arnold said yes. Mitsubishi told her son to take care of himself after all. He always puts too much pressure on himself. Arnold said he never put pressure on himself. After all, he lived his life with dignity. Mitsuba smiled and asked what it was like. Good, let it be according to him. He must do everything in his power. After that, Arnold went outside, where Sebastian was already waiting for him. He told him to find out the weaknesses of the nobility of the neutral faction. He must do everything in his power while he is in the capital. Sebastian said that everything would be done. Arnold thought he should think about what would happen next. To protect this place is his duty, which means that he has no right to rest. So they will continue their secret maneuver. Arnold arrived at Count Burz's. Count Burz greeted him and told him to come in. He asked what had brought him to him. Count Burz was the head of the Minister of Construction Works. Arnold thought that Count Burz was not directly involved in the battle for the throne and still did not belong to anyone's side. He told the Count that, in truth, he had heard rumors. Count Burtz asked what the rumors were. Arnold said that, for example, rumors that his wife has fun every night. She allows herself entertainment, like royalty. So there are rumors where she gets the money for all this. Count Burtz said the rumors were exaggerated. His wife really loves entertainment, but not to such an extent. Arnold thought it looked like it was true. It is clear from Sebastian's reports that the Count told his friends about this. Most likely, he himself does not like the behavior of his wife. The question is how much he's involved in everything. After that, he said that there was another rumor. Count Burtz immediately tensed up and asked what kind. Arnold said that he was using the state treasury for personal purposes. Count Burtz was very scared and jumped up and said that he would never do that. He is a loyal subject of his empire who offers all efforts for the sake of the country. Let him believe him. Arnold said that he would like to believe it, but he is here because this rumor has even reached their castle. He understands what will happen if his father finds out about it, doesn't he? Count Bayads was so scared that he started asking Arnold for help. Arnold said he didn't have a single reason to help a criminal. Count Burrs said that, but he really did not take money from the treasury. Arnold asked, then where did the money come from? His salary would not allow him to provide for his spouse, wouldn't it? Count Burrs said that everything was fine at first, since he had savings. However, they ended in an instant. And then he began to borrow from friends and even merchants. He was very embarrassed in front of his friends and the deadline for repayment of the debt to the merchants is coming. And he doesn't know what to do. Arnold thought that and why did he marry her? At that moment, his disgruntled wife burst into the room. She asked if he hadn't given her enough money this month. The Count immediately jumped up and asked, what is really Bettina? Can't she see that they have an important conversation with the prince? Bettina asked if he was a prince. Count Bert asked what she was saying. Arnold introduced himself and apologized for the intrusion. Bettina asked what Arnold was. A prince, then. A worthless prince who has absorbed all the best qualities. She had heard about him from Prince Harzbat's son. He doesn't even have the ability, does he? What business does he have with them? Then Count Burtz could not stand it and told his wife to leave. Bettina asked that did he dare to order her. Count Burtz shouted that he had told her to get lost. After that, his wife left. The Count fell on his knees in front of the prince and began to apologize for his wife's rudeness. Arnold said it was okay, because he was already used to it. However, his wife is quite straightforward. Count Burrs said that he met her at the age of 17. She is from the provincial aristocracy. Beautiful, popular, he immediately fell in love with her. He gave her gifts, and eventually they got married. He kept giving her what she wanted, but each time she asked for more. It got to the point that she began to consider herself the highest aristocracy. Arnold said that undoubtedly, most of the blame lies with his wife, but there is also his responsibility. He should have scolded her in a timely manner in order to avoid such a situation. Count Bert said he understood that. Arnold asked that he didn't file for divorce because he proposed marriage himself, didn't he? The Count said that was why, too, but primarily because His Majesty was glad to hear the news of their engagement. He even gave them gifts and gave them a feast. Arnold said it was understandable why it was difficult to file for divorce. He thought that Count Burrs interested him not only for this reason. His father bribes the Count to serve loyally. If the Emperor had known about what was happening, he would have advised a divorce. He needs an intermediary. After that, he told the Count that he was sure that he was not a fool. And he understands why he's here, doesn't he? Count Bert said yes. He wants him to help in the battle for the throne, doesn't he? 
Arnold said that he would have preferred to observe him longer in order to make sure that he could trust him. But it seems that he has very little time. He will tell his father about what is happening here. If his father does not mind, then let him immediately file for divorce. He cannot worry about her, because he will write a letter to her family. Count Burtz asked if he was sure of that. Arnold thought it was a somewhat selfish act, but all for the sake of the throne, and let her cry as much as she wants, because it's her own fault. After that, Arnold said that, and now get to the point. Then asked if he could write a letter for him. The Count asked what the letter was. Arnold said it was true. Convincing him now would be the easiest thing. About the fact that he is a good person, he believes that he would not like to either. To keep his marriage alive, right. The Count said that, of course. He'll write right away. After that, he immediately sat down at the table and began to write a letter. Arnold thought that he was born a metropolitan aristocrat, an elite, but because of one woman alone he became so unhappy. It is necessary to take the choice of a wife with full seriousness. He introduced Elna and Feeney as his wives, and then he thought that he was tormented by torments of doubt in both cases. Still, he likes ordinary women. Here the Count finished the letter and handed Arnold the paper, asked what kind of letter would suit him. Arnold took the letter in his hands and asked what they had here. But after reading it, he looked slightly upset and said that he perfectly conveyed his dissatisfaction with his wife's actions. Now that he has agreed to help him, then he should not fall into the same trap twice. Count Burrs said that he would not fall for a woman anymore. He swears that he will serve him and Leonardo with faith and honor. Arnold said that even if he did not misunderstand him, he would only help him. His Highness, the Emperor, is still his master. After that, Arnold went outside and Agraf decided to see him off. At parting, Arnold said that he had the letter. The result will be known in a few days. The Count said that, of course, and thanked him. Arnold looked at Bettina, who was looking at him from the window with displeasure. Arnold smiled contentedly and said that it was scary. It remains to be patient for a few days. After that, he went to his brother and gave him this letter. He easily managed to convince Leo. After reading this letter, Leo asked what and why did they get married at all. And then Arnold gave this letter to the emperor. And the father also agreed to their divorce and ordered to write a corresponding letter. Thus, he managed to get the support of Count Burrs and his influence, albeit a little, but increased. Arnold was sitting in his office, and now he had Finney. The girl asked if he was sure. Arnold asked what she was talking about. Finney said that about his decision to make Burtz his ally. Of course, you can empathize with him, but you can't deny that he is to blame for everything, either. He gave his young wife gifts, and when he lost control of the situation, a divorce. As a woman, it is very difficult for her to accept this. Arnold said that if you look at it from this side, then Burtz is still a scumbag. Feeney asked if there were no more suitable allies. Arnold said that Bettina is from the family of the fifth princess and a distant relative of Count Kruger. As a child five princess, she is also related to Sandra. Feeney said it was clear, but nevertheless, it seems to her that this connection is quite insignificant. Arnold said she was right, but in this case, everything is different. And now let her remember what kind of connections their rival has. The girl said that it seemed that it was Prince Eric a civil official. Prince Gordon is an officer, Princess Sandra, who is a mentor in magic. Arnold said it was true, and I asked her what she thought, which of them was the weakest link for the capital. The girl asked that for the capital, not the empire, right. Arnold said exactly what. Finney thought about it and said that no matter what, his highness, Eric, would be the strongest. She understood, it was his highness, Gordon. The officer is on the front line outside the capital, and that's why he can be considered the weakest, right. Arnold said it wasn't a bad idea, but the answer wasn't right. There are also some officers who do not go to the front line. The correct answer is Sandra. Finn was not upset and said that it means wrong. And why is Her Highness Sandra the weakest? Arnold took the cookie and said he would explain as simply as possible. He broke the cookie into several pieces and began to explain to her. He said that because of his positions, a civil official and an officer spends a lot of time in the capital. However, with the mentor of magic, everything is different. He can be both a neighborhood aristocrat and a border officer. They are scattered in all corners. Feeney said that in other words, Her Highness Sandra rarely visits the capital, isn't that right? Since she has few supporters, few will volunteer to convey her words to the Emperor. Arnold asked her if she understood now. Feeney said yes. If she does not have supporters capable of attending the most important meetings of the highest dignitary, then this is a huge problem. Arnold said that it was exactly that, which is why Sandra always tried to push her strongmen into officials. Finney asked if it was possible. The decision is made by His Highness, the Emperor, isn't it? 
Arnold said there were loopholes. At the moment, the minister is Lev. He chooses a bird as president for the role of minister. Thus, he chooses the right person for himself. Finney said she understood. Then after that, he can already change it with full rights. Arnold said that's exactly what it is. Then Finney asked what and how does all this relate to Count Bert's. Arnold sighed and asked what position he was in. Feeney said that the deputy minister of construction works. Arnold said that in other words Sandra manipulates Bettina for her own purposes. And recently she ordered Bettina to cheat on her husband by sleeping with the current minister. And his wife is a close friend of the emperor. And it looks like the emperor brought them together. If the emperor found out about something like this, he would be furious. Finney asked if this was really all planned from the very beginning. Arnold said that this was Sandra's plan. She brought them together and then made him suffer because of her choice. Meanwhile, the overthrow of the minister himself was also planned. He, who noticed this in time, helps out Count Bertz and informs the emperor about the betrayal. And what a surprise, because now he has his own minister as an ally. Finney said what it meant. Arnold said that he was grateful to her for such efforts over several years, but she still miscalculated about something. He just stole her plan. He's sure she's furious right now. Finn was shocked and asked if he really decided to anger her just when he and Mr. Leo were going to leave the capital. Arnold said it was true. That's why he needs to come up with something. If we don't attack him with the three of us, then it's obvious that he won't expose. But what if the balance is upset? After the plan was stolen from her, and she received such a slap in the face, then he is sure that she is in complete confusion. Eric and Gordon will not turn a blind eye to this. They can be combined at any time. But Sandra is vulnerable right now. They should clip her wings. Feeney asked if he had really thought it all that far. Arnold said that not without Sebastian's help. He learned all the necessary information from the assassin's scent. It was he who also provided information about the situation of Count Bertz. Thanks to this, they fully revealed Sandra's plan. Finney asked who was Sebastian. Arnold asked what. Didn't he tell her about it? He is a former liquidator, a master of his craft, who was called all over the continent and called the god of death. Feeney asked what and how did such a person become his butler. Arnold said it was a very long story. He would tell about it another time. And he asked if there were any more questions about why he helped Count Bertz. Finney said no. She suddenly felt sorry for him. Arnold said that it was true, starting from the marriage itself and until now he was just dancing to someone else's tune. However, he will continue to do this only under their control. But he's already finished. Finney said he did a good job. And she asked what he had written there. Arnold said that it says here about the treason of the Minister of Construction Affairs. Through Count Burrs, he will give it to his father. And he himself thought that this was how their underground war with Sandra began. Now the battle for the throne is getting tougher, but it's even better this way. Gordon and Sandra are ready to tear each other's throats. They just need to give a reason. In such a situation, Eric simply will not be able to act. And while they are not in the capital, they will do all the work for them. The emperor was very angry about something. He asked the man if it was true. The man was shaking all over with fear and asked him to take pity. He said it was some kind of mistake. The emperor said it was a sin to lay hands on someone else's wife. As a minister, he cannot be unaware of this. The minister said that Bettina herself insisted. He was trapped. The emperor asked that he simply succumb to temptation and slept with the wife of a subordinate. So he means that he would have agreed to if the princess had seduced him, right? The minister said that this was not the case. This is completely different. The emperor said it was the same thing. Does he really want to say that the woman will be to blame for everything, and not him? He turned his back on him and said he was withdrawing his debt. And he ordered the guards to lock him up in his own house, let him think about his behavior. The minister kept begging the emperor to have mercy. The emperor didn't want to hear him anymore and told them to call Count Burrs here. Count Burrs immediately appeared and, kneeling before the emperor, said that he asked him to forgive him for not seeing his wife. The emperor said she was no longer his wife, and now he would like to talk about something else. So he shouldn't blame himself for what happened. Count Burrs wanted to say something. But the emperor interrupted him and said that he was not going to tell him off. And if someone slanders him again, he will deal with him himself. Count Burrs did not expect to hear such a thing from the emperor. The emperor said that he is always very serious and is burning with his work. He would always like to see people like him for the post of minister. He appoints him to the post of minister. Construction works. He must give his all for the glory of the empire. Count Burrs said that he would always remember his grace. He swears in the name of his family that he will not put him to shame. After that, someone came up to the emperor and said that they had struck one blow. The emperor looked at this man and asked what France was. It was Franz Siebeck. He is the prime minister. The emperor said that it was quite a natural course of events during the struggle for the throne. 
you need to be very vigilant and get rid of those who want to deceive him right now. France said he had nothing to object to, but he is sure of Bert's appointment to the minister's place. The emperor said that even if he is manipulated, it does not matter for ascension to the throne. You need to be able to resort to tricks. France said he was saying strange things. During his ascent, he entrusted him with such machinations. The emperor said he had to find out what he was like. And as he sees it now, he is sitting on the throne. France grinned and said he must be joking. Even without him, he would have ascended to the throne. He has no doubt about it. And he just played the role of a fool. Being the eldest son, he was nicknamed the Prince Libertine. The emperor said that in the struggle for the throne, there is no need to hurry. However, his son was in a hurry. France said there was no evidence that he was murdered. But he's still doubtful, isn't he? The emperor said he was sure of it, that he had been killed. He was an outstanding person, but being too kind would have been enough for him if he had just been around. France said that maybe it is, nevertheless, the current four factions looks interesting. Prince Leonard has incredible charisma, but someone is acting behind his back. Otherwise he would not have been able to increase his power so quickly. And he thinks it might be Arnold, doesn't he? The Emperor said that it was because he looked like him. He plays his part in the fool. It is possible that it just seems to him. France said that in order to understand, he helped him, didn't he? But now Leonard is unable to cope and take the reins on himself. The Emperor said that he was right, but he also succumbed slightly to emotions. France grinned and said they would see what the Dark Twins could show them. The Emperor asked what the Dark Twins were. Not a bad name together they are as one. Following the righteous path, Leonardo casts a shadow. This shadow and helper is Arnold. They have a chance to come to the throne and he will not be surprised that each of the families will come to the throne in another generation. France said that and who knows. After all, all of the applicants are worthy. However, it is still very early to talk about the chances. The emperor said that this was fine, too. The battle for the throne generates great minds. Thanks to this the empire can exist in peace and tranquility. And he himself thought that he could only wish that as little blood as possible was spilled. A man came to Leonard and said that he was reporting to Viscount Helmel began to act. Leonard said he would talk to people, and they shouldn't let him get anyone on his side. He was also informed that the commander of the Imperial Guard, Rimmer, had been captured by His Highness Sandra. Leonard said that even if they don't send people anymore, they will use only those who can oppose something. He's coming too. Arnold, who was in the office all this time and said that everything was not okay, as he would see. Leonardo said that so let him help. In the end, it's all because of him. Arnold said that it was true, because it was he who offered to save Count Burtz. But he agreed, didn't he? He is ready to apologize for the fact that everything turned into such a mess, but if it wasn't for them, their brothers and sisters would have attacked. And what can he help him with now? Leonardo asked what, and what, in that case, can he do? Arnold said his modesty could drive him to the grave. He just needs to get out before to convince people, and then the faction supporting them can defect to them. So good luck. Leonard said that he was, as always, in his repertoire. Well, he sent him with work, he will definitely help him. After Leonard left, Arnold turned to Sebastian and asked what they would do with Sandra. Sebastian thought about it, then said that they should target Ms. Finney. Arnold said that he thought so, because only she is able to help them during their absence. Sebastian asked if they would leave her at the castle. However, he hadn't seen her for a long time. Arnold said no, because it's not safe here right now. Sebastian said that as far as he could tell, the safest place was next to him. Arnold said that Sandra would probably want to tear him apart right now. What kind of security can we talk about? Sebastian asked if it was a mistake to sway Count Burrs to his side. Probably. His Highness Sandra now understands that he can pose a threat. Arnold said that one way or another he couldn't stay idle forever. What is not a little important, she may incorrectly believe that he greatly contributed to this. Sebastian said, as far as he knew, he always preferred to counterattack when he understood the enemy's intent. However, this time he's just defending himself. It's about Mrs. Finney, isn't it? Arnold said it was true, because she was Prince Clainert's daughter after all. Having lost them, they will drive themselves into a dead end. Sebastian looked at him, then asked if that was the only thing. Arnold asked what else he wanted to say. Sebastian said nothing. He thinks he's right. Mrs. Mitsubishi will be happy too. After that, Arnold started packing. Sebastian asked if he was really leaving. Arnold said he had to make sure Feeney was okay. Sebastian said it was fine. Go to a meeting under the cover of anxiety. Arnold said that whoever was talking. Sebastian asked what was wrong. Where did he hide her? Arnold said that he already knew everything perfectly well in the safest place in the capital with the most influential person. Sebastian said it was clear. It turns out that the mansion of the hero of Armsburg. After that, Sebastian and Arnold arrived there. Sebastian said he was right, because they couldn't reach here. 
Arnold said that's it. Anna von Armsberg met them at the house. She is the wife of the hero Armsberg and the mother of Elna. Anna, she told Arnold that they haven't seen each other for a long time. Arnold agreed. Anna looked and asked if Sebastian was with him today. Unfortunately, my husband is not at home right now. Well, then she abruptly apologized. I told her that she probably should have a more formal conversation with him. Arnold said it wasn't worth it, let her continue as usual. Anna said that. What then, with his permission? Elna and Finney are taking a bath right now. If he wishes, he can join. Arnold said thank you, but he would refuse because he still wants to live. Anna asked, what is he like? They used to go together. Arnold said that it was in a distant childhood, and every time she tried to drown him, Anna said that there was such a thing and both of them came back with tears. He was crying from her eternal beatings and training, and she was furious and crying from the fact that he was not getting stronger at all. Arnold said that I was listening to this, now he understands all the illogic, and he thought it looked like she was his natural enemy after all. Anna told him he could wait in the back parlor. Arnold said it was fine. Anna turned to Sebastian and asked if he would help pour the tea. Sebastian said it would be done. Arnold wandered around looking for the right room. He looked at the doors and thought, is it really here? He reached for the handle and thought that as soon as he finished here, he would immediately go home. But it wasn't that room. Finney and Elna were getting dressed here right after the bath. Finney said she was sure that this would suit her very well. White dress. Elna said that maybe she would stop dressing her up like. But then she noticed Arnold, who came into the room. Both girls blushed very much. Arnold thought that Anna had deceived him. Alma immediately attacked him with her fists. After that, everyone went down to the main hall. Anna apologized to Arnold. Arnold, who was beaten by Elna, said nothing. Everything is fine. Finney blushed and said she was asking for her forgiveness. It's all because of her thoughtless act. Elna told her it wasn't her fault. Arnold is the only one to blame here. Anna said that's what she thought they were already in the bathroom. But all the clothes for the guests are there. Arnold thought that she had deliberately chosen the moment when Fi was not changing clothes. For what happened, what happened? He felt her angry carried away, but trying to keep up with him was useless. Anna looked at Arnold and smiled, asked what could be, then he would take responsibility. She doesn't mind. Finney and Elna blushed and asked what was what. Anna asked her daughter what she thought, that she herself didn't mind, did she? Or is it still against? Elna jumped up from her seat and said that she was actually a knight. Then Anna looked at Athene and said that the question then remains with the Kleinert family. And Arnold is very popular. Sebastian, who was also present here, said that it was true. We need to contact Mrs. Finney's parents. Finney blushed and asked what? Did they really want to talk to her father? Let them not decide it for her. Arnold said he didn't want to get married right now. Anna asked if he wouldn't take responsibility. Arnold said no. Anna said it was a pity. After that, Anna got to the point and said that now they would get down to business. He didn't just come to visit, did he? Arnold grinned and said that it might seem arrogant, but couldn't he ask them to shelter Finney for a while? And to have Elna by her side as much as possible? Anna asked that it was about the battle for the throne, wasn't it? Then it's impossible. After all, their family is a hero's family. They cannot help in the war for the throne. Arnold said that indeed it could be considered as aiding them. However, His Majesty the Emperor treats Finney with all care. If anything happened to her, it would only incur his wrath. In this case, the safest place for her is in the hero's family. Anna said that's how it means. Arnold said yes, she wouldn't just give up. Anna said that if he had asked in the spirit, save him, she would have agreed. And as always, emotions cannot be squeezed out of him. He might regret it. Arnold said he would take that into account. And thank you very much. Someday he will pay for it. Anna said that time flies so fast. He is already involved in the battle for the throne. To her, he was always a little crybaby. But it seems that everything has already changed. Arnold said he couldn't cry forever. After that, Arnold got up and told the girl to stay here for a while longer. He thinks they'll figure it out in a few days. Finney asked if they were in danger. Arnold said they were going to attack Gordon and Sandra. This fight will decide whether they can continue their fight. Finney said that maybe it would be better for them. But Arnold interrupted her and said that if he hid, they would target Leo. They have to look away from Sandra, so he can't just hide. Some killer will definitely attack him once. Finney got scared and jumped up from her seat, asked what. Arnold smiled and told her to calm down, because Sebastian was next to him. And there is someone to come to the rescue. Two days later, Arnold and Sebastian were sitting in the carriage. Arnold sensed that they were surrounded and said that here they were. Enemies. There is a woman among them whom he has not seen before. But his murder will be beneficial only for Eric and Gordon. Sebastian said that they would prefer to dump all the work on her highness Sandra, so let him let him figure it out. Arnold said that it was fine, then he would go to the castle. 
Sebastian, getting out of the carriage, said that he had to be careful because there might be an ambush. Arnold said that's when he would think about it. After that, Sebastian got out of the carriage and Arnold was left there alone. Arnold thought that he was more than sure that there would be an ambush. Most likely they will try to distract Sebastian. Well, then he will just gather information to kill the one who wants to kill him. Here the coachman turned to the prince. Arnold thought that here he is. The coachman reported that there was a man in front of them. Arnold told him to keep going. So the man drove straight at this man. This strange man immediately offended aside and said that he was not going to die here. Arnold thought that he certainly knew about it, but it seems that he is even less respected than he thought. This man told him to get out because he wasn't going to pull him out of the cart. Arnold told him that he just wanted to make sure that who was in it. This man said that it was stupid of him to split up with the escort. Arnold thought it looked like Sandra was acting very confident. An adventurer is about a class, isn't it? He told this man that they stopped respecting him clearly unevenly at this moment. After that, he got out of the carriage. This man said it was clear, so it's not so easy to scare him. Does he really trust his butler that much? Arnold said that it was true because Sebastian would come for him soon. The man said that the relationship between the master and the servant is excellent, but he is in a hurry to upset him. No matter how strong he is to deal with 20 murderers and rush here, he just won't have time. Arnold said who knows. Then this man activated his power and said that he was ordered to kill him, but he wouldn't. He will immobilize him and bring him to the owner. Arnold said that he would not like to get to his sister who likes interrogations. The man said that if you reproach someone, then let him reproach his brother. After that, this man directed his power at him. But then a girl came to Arnold's aid. Arnold himself was very surprised by this because he did not expect this. The man asked who else she was. The girl said she was just passing by. Arnold looked at this girl and thought that he seemed to have met her before. But then he really remembered her. He was in the role of silver then. He thought that she was definitely in a rank adventurer. The man told this girl that if she was a simple adventurer, she should leave here. She didn't come here on a mission, did she? The girl said she didn't know the man from behind her, and she had no idea why he was attacked. She has no sense of duty or reason to save him. The man said that in this case. But the girl interrupted him and took out her sword and said that, however, the aftertaste from the murder in front of her nose was simply disgusting. And such a fight seems unfair to her, so she must help. The man said that this way she would only turn the noble people against herself. Is she sure she wants this? The girl said that it was better than just turning a blind eye to what was happening. Then the man threw knives at her and said that then let her die. The man thought that if she dodged, then throw a complaint at the prince. What will she do? But what he saw surprised him very much. This girl easily hit all the balls. Arnold himself was very surprised by this sight. He thought, did the sword transform? Her sword turned into a shield. Arnold told the girl that she had an interesting thing. The girl said she found it in one of the ruins. She's even capable of that. After that, she hit the ground with her sword, and then she started twisting it over her head. She asked the man that really he can't resist. After all, even high-level monsters are not able to resist this symphony. At that moment Sebastian came up to Arnold. Sebastian asked what and what is going on here. Arnold pointed to this girl and told the butler that it was extremely dangerous, but she saved him and thank the girl. At that moment, that man had already run away. The girl told Arnold that it was not worth it. She can't pass by when she kills a person. Looking at the carriage, she can assume that he is from the nobility, right? Arnold said it was true. His name is Arnold, he is the seventh prince. The girl said it was clear. So this is the battle for the throne, about which there are so many rumors. She's just trying to help people. She took off her hat and kneeling in front of him, said that her name was Lymphia, and she asked if he could listen to her request. They went into the room. Lydia sat down opposite Arnold. Arnold told her he would listen to her, even though he wasn't sure he could help. Lymphia thanked him for that. She said that she was born in one of the villages in the south of the empire. She thinks he can imagine a migrant village, doesn't she? Arnold thought that these were people who had fled their native places because of the war or the appearance of monsters. Arnold said that, of course, because it's a big problem for him. Lymphia said that there are a lot of migrant villages, but the empire has no idea how much. However, this is not surprising, because they even build them arbitrarily. Being one of such residents, she is not going to complain about it at all. However, now they need the help of the empire. Their villages are formed thanks to refugees. But lately, the abduction of children and young girls has been happening more and more often. Arnold said that if that's all it was, then it's not surprising. 
or is there an ulterior motive behind these abductions? Lymphia said it was heterochromia. Sebastian and Arnold tensed. Arnold thought that a distinctive feature of heterochromia is the different color of the pupils, which people are extremely rare and are more capable of magic, therefore they have a high value. Arnold said that if it's about human trafficking, he can't turn a blind eye to it. She thought it would be easier to contact the soldiers in the nearest major city, didn't she? Lydia said she had applied, but no one had lifted a finger. She left the village in order to appeal to the powerful of the world. When performing one of the assignments, she found out about a certain silver. There were rumors that he might be related to the imperial family, and for the sake of meeting him, she came to the capital. However, she had another opportunity. Arnold said they didn't do anything, so. But if local influential forces are their accomplices, then he simply does not have time to solve this problem. Lymphia asked why. Sebastian explained that Mr. Arnold was going to another country as an ambassador. It will be at least for half a month, and if the case drags on, then for several. With all his desire, he does not have time. Lymphy, I asked if she could at least get financial support. She would try to find adventurers who could be trusted and set a reward for protecting villages. Their trees do not have the finances that would allow them to hire a guard. She spends her earnings for the same purposes, but this is not enough. Arnold listened to her and thought that it meant that she became an adventurer for this. And what should he do? Technically, she saved his life, but not that his life was in danger. If you leave everything as it is, then claims from a couple of people will fly in his direction. He just doesn't have a choice. He said he heard her, and asked if she had any suggestions. He will be able to help fully only upon his return. Until then, he needs time. While he is away, he will entrust the responsible adventurers with the protection of villages. You don't have to worry about paying. And he asked her what was wrong with her. Lymphia looked surprised and asked if he was sure about it. Sebastian whispered to Arnold that it's dangerous. If other problems wither them, then this may become their weak point. And then today's incident may happen again. The girl heard this and said that in this case she could help them. In return for protecting the village, she will protect them and what they want to protect. How about such a deal? Arnold said the offer was tempting, but was she sure? The girl said that there were no particularly dangerous people among the kidnappers. She believes that the concept of a class adventurers will be enough to ensure the safety of the village. Arnold thought that she wanted to be there to make sure that he would act not only in words, didn't he? A strong sense of duty and alertness. He decided to check it out, and asked what, and if he renounces his duties. Lydia said that with compromising evidence on him, she would join another camp, and having received a reward for the information, she will save the village. Arnold asked what if he didn't agree to the deal at all. The girl said that in this case she would just turn to other people with the same words. It will only add to the above that he refused to help. Arnold thought that she was coldly assessing the situation and moving the pieces on the board. She understands that he is testing her. He turned to the butler and asked what he thought. Sebastian said there were no special comments. She can become a strong ally. Arnold said that, well, nothing can be done. He didn't even have a choice. He accepts her offer. She helps him, and he helps her. Does it suit her? Lydia said that, of course, but why does he say that he has no choice? Arnold said that his brother is a good-natured simpleton. The Duke's daughter, who gives them great support. If he refuses her, they will get angry and try to help themselves. So the best option would be to help right away. Lydia said that, to be honest, she was surprised. Most residents speak unflatteringly about him, that he is only a semblance of his brother. However, these rumors are completely contrary to reality. He is not weak or powerless at all. Maybe he is Prince Leonardo. Arnold told her not to worry, because he was Arnold and he himself thought that he had completely forgotten that he was playing the role of the powerless. After that, he got up and said that it was okay. He held out his hand to her and said they should seal their deal with a handshake. He relies on her. Lydia said it was mutual. After that, they shook hands. Arnold came to meet Elna. Elna asked, what is it? Isn't he busy preparing to leave? Arnold said nothing of the sort. He just entrusted everything to Leo. Elna said it was him again. Arnold said that come on, if he doesn't have a job, he'll find it for himself anyway, and asked that, by the way, she is not busy right now. Ella asked what, was he going to ask her out on a date? Arnold said something like that. After that, they walked around the city. Elna thanked him for sheltering Finney, but it was still worth telling her first. He confused her. Arnold said what was more important, she had to go to a meeting with the Count. Is it okay that he distracted her? Elna told him not to worry, because she herself wanted to walk around the capital after so much time. Arnold said he was only talking about lunch. Arnold thought it looked like her hat was a magical tool against recognition. 
Alma said that nothing has changed here. Does he remember? How exactly was he bullet here? Arnold said he remembers it perfectly. Al Ella said it was very hard to drive away the children who beat him, but it was necessary to stop them. After all, it would be bad to beat one person in a crowd, especially her prince. Arnold said no one knew he was a prince. Alma said it was still unforgivable. They made him cry. Arnold told her to stop. She remembered something wrong. It was after that incident that she began to drag him around in fencing class and bully him in every possible way, bringing him to tears. Elma said she wasn't being bullied. She just wanted him to look like a real prince in some way, at least in terms of self-defense. Arnold said it was understandable so that he could defend himself against her. Elma said no and punched him in the stomach. Arnold even fell from such a blow. Elma said that she was just immersed in pleasant memories. Arnold thought that they were just like that for her and said that, if you think about it, how did it happen that every time he goes outside, she is always nearby? Elma said that Sebastian had informed her. Arnold wondered if they had picked up too troublesome a guard for him, and he said that his father also told him to follow her, even allowed to leave the lessons. The hero respects the royal family too much. Elma said oh, but it's not just that. She held out her hand to him and said that someday she would tell him, but for now they need to move on. They were walking around the city together and Arnold thought that Elna, who became a knight of the guard at the age of 11, was constantly on the road with missions. One of the tasks of the knights of the guard is to travel around the empire as the eyes of the emperor. Elna is the genius of the Armsburg family, who summoned the sacred sword at the age of 12. However, its presence at the border will favorably contribute to the establishment of diplomatic relations. It's an amazing coincidence, because Elna returns to the capital only once a year. As soon as she is assigned the next mission, will she immediately go to another place? For Elna, this is the only chance to walk around the capital. But as soon as they finish with lunch, that time will come to an end. He is already grateful that he was able to walk with her like this. Arnold asked that where would they go next. Elna said she would decide during the walk. Arnold said that it was not far-sighted, but there is no choice, they need to go to the nearest restaurant. After that it started to rain, Arnold called the girl. Elna asked what's what. Arnold asked where did she go. The girl said that once upon a time, after his fun, he went to the hotel, didn't he? Arnold thought he knew it, and he told her to stop. Elna asked what, why is that? If she said she wanted to go there, then she would go. Knights don't go back on their word. Arnold said it was fine, because it would be faster for her to see for herself. After they approached this hotel, Arnold said that the owner had changed a few years ago. He has carried out major repairs and publishes the hotel only to couples. It would be a blow to her reputation if she was recognized and seen in such an institution, wouldn't it? So they'd better find another place. But Ella said no, they would go inside. Knights don't go back on their word. Besides, they just need to wait out the rain. 